Hello guys, how you doing tonight? Um, she's still going. She's still going. so. I was like, all right, I I added everything all together here. Here, let me take this last screen for a second. Um, and then at the last like few hours, I'll record the last little bit, and then I'll put it in after. She's just ranting, and maybe it wasn't just a couple hours that I, I missed from before, but the rest of the week's there. So I'm just gonna let her, I'm just gonna let her go off because she's taking way too long. It's taking way too long. It's almost 9:45. It's supposed to be at 9:30, um, and I'm always a little late, but not this. Uh, but yeah, Melissa M, I agree with you. What she is spewing, like Jesus, jumping. She is really against adoption. I can't imagine why. Can't imagine why, guys, because she says, um. She's going home with the kid, like she gets uh, getting reunited with the kid and everything, right? Right. But uh, Dylan, <laughs> hey, Plant, how you doing? Um, Lily, I, I, wow, I can't read that, but I hope you're doing well. Kelly, uh, short stack, we got Ryan. Um, who else we got? Gretchen, how you doing? Um, positive recovery, I like that. Positive, like a, like pause. Like the hands of animals, you know, you know. Um, who else we got? Luis Harris. I don't think I've seen you around. Um, thank you for becoming a member. I hope. Oh, speaking of memberships, speaking of memberships for everyone who's on time. Angela, Angela, how you doing? I hope you're uh, doing amazing. And I think I've seen the other Angela in here as well. Um, I hope you're both doing amazing. And same with Mud Pit. I think I've seen Mud Pit. There's Mud Pit. Um, yeah, let me uh, actually, before we get into Heather, since you guys are on time and I'm never on time, um, I'm going to, uh, we'll do a giveaway because it's uh, it's another, it's a new month. It's a whole new world. I was supposed to do this last stream and I didn't. Um, so here, let me uh, take this off. What is this? Okay, sometimes she posts like, no, she's still going. Never mind. I was going to say, sometimes she just posts other people's shit fire through that we don't need that uh okay so oh let's do i don't know what that means gift five let's see who's got it let's see i'll forget i'll forget to do this later and it uh, just uh, it reminded me uh cory j crumb three or Teresa. i think i'm Teresa. ryan ryan got one um who else I think LA, LA Al was already there. Gretchen, Gretchen, and maybe that's five. I don't know. I think I was supposed to be counting one more, but whatever. Oh, your highness, how you doing tonight as well? Okay, let me get this off. Uh, let's switch over to Heather. Heather, good old Heather. Good old crazy fucking Heather. I think I liked her better in the tent. Um, but I'm glad that she's not in the tent, to be honest. It only took her it only took her having a kid and having it taken away for her to be like, you know what? Maybe I don't feel like going back to the tent. Maybe like living in a tent isn't for me. Maybe I should uh, accept the resources that are available. Des, how you doing? Um, so yeah, start off the week with the breast milk bunny. The beautiful breast. Oh, milk. I also got milk to show you guys. I don't do it now because like we should get into Heather, but like around closer to the smoke break i'll show you guys i got milk in bags i got uh chocolate milk regular milk i got the fucking uh container thing to put the milk in so i can show you guys all about canadian milk as well so this uh, what was what was heather's breast milk money this say ultra thin little thin crust pizza sausage green pepper onion i thought she didn't like pizza she did like um a short being a short uh, story being like, I we, we can't eat pizza, guys. We're going out to eat. We're going back out. Uh, one cup of penne with uh, chicken alfredo sauce, Caesar salad, uh, muffins, water, protein. What? Protein water? What the fuck is protein water? I've never heard of that. A large apple and two pieces of turkey. Char turkey breast. So I didn't buy the cooler yet. Someone. Oh, and she's on the hunt for a cooler to keep milk frozen for eight hours dm'd me and told me that it does not stay frozen for two days i literally need it frozen for like eight hours six to eight hours um 
part in my hair. If you guys know of any really good coolers at an affordable price, preferably available at Target or Amazon, I need it for early next week. DM me and let me know, please. I need a cooler that will keep my breast milk frozen while I transport it for like six to eight hours um, in the car and or on public transportation. This doesn't make any sense. Like, so she's transporting it for eight hours and then she's going to got to go back. So another eight hours and then it's the end of the day. You have to sleep for around eight hours. So this is Heather's life. It's just driving around town with her breast milk. She's going to be pumping along the way too. This is just, where are you going? So I personally do not believe, and I know this goes against a lot of celebrities and like people who um, live in the media. I don't believe in surrogacy and I don't believe in adoption. Um, I believe that biologically God creates us to have children if we're supposed to. And if we're not, then we don't. Um, I believe there's a lot of nefarious shit that goes on with adoption and with surrogacy. So this is her first rant about adoption and surrogacy. She's still ranting about it right now. So this is the beginning of the week and at the fucking end of the week. She's all week. She's just going on about this shit. Um, and biologically, babies cry a lot. They're really annoying sometimes. Babies are really annoying, guys. Therefore, like adoption, not for a surrogacy. Like, why Why would you get a surrogacy prince? Like, are you crazy, lady? It's of Satan when people steal babies. I'm reading off of a thing youtube um steal babies from mothers in biblical times there was no such thing as taking someone else's baby from them that would be kidnapping and you'd be stoned to death um so i think like reality is setting in for her if you look up the science behind it biologically we have genetic factors that tie us to these babies so that we don't kill them do you understand that this is scientific evidence look it up if you don't believe me look it up same with animals there's lots of examples of parents killing their kids as well unfortunately remember that uh that mom and father who like shook their baby because they wanted to play farmville or something i think it was farmville um and then there's like there's like a ton of them there was this guy who killed three of his kids on twitter well not on twitter but like it was on twitter the other day um there's that other lady who Oh, there was um what the what's her the chick who got away with it? That was crazy from Florida. Um fuck, what was her name? But she killed her baby and then her lawyer got her off somehow. One of my friends went to high school with her. I can't remember her fucking name. I can never remember her name, but um she was a big deal. She it was like a big media thing. Adoption surrogacy they don't have that so i'm not saying that they will abuse the baby but i'm not saying they won't and they don't have the biological indicators to protect the baby not only casey anthony thank you yeah casey anthony case that was a real mom only that look at the virgin mary if god wants you to have a baby you'll have a baby not through and let's talk about the reasons why these these women pick surrogacy they don't want to gain weight <laughs> they don't want their body to change i mean what kind of selfish shit is that? And I'm not against Kim Kardashian or all of Heather's reasons. <laughs> she listed off for um, why you should breastfeed. We're all beneficial to her and not the baby. And she's like, oh, you'll heal faster. Your your uterus will shrink. She's like angry that she isn't back to her pre-pregnancy weight ten days after giving birth. It's just like it's a lot of Heather. I think you're talking about yourself or Chloe, or any of these women who do surrogacy, but I am against surrogacy. I just don't feel like it's the right way. If you want to be blessed enough to be a mother, then you better be willing to use your body to feed, to nourish, to protect, and to grow that child. That's, I mean, that's just the way it's supposed to be, in my opinion. And you guys are all allowed to have other opinions. Um, in my opinion, babies belong with their mothers, their blood, their biological parents. And if there is some sort of reason why, you know, the parent cannot be an effective parent, then they should not be, you know, blessed by God with this child. I don't remember Heather being so religious before this week. I really don't because um, I've never heard her. I mean, I remember being like Jehovah God, me and Xavier. I mean, Jehovah God, I'm going to say 
Xavier tells me that Jehovah God's going to get us out of this. Um, but like, no, Heather, no. Even when you talk about things like, oh, the parent's a drug addict. Well, I personally don't use drugs, right? Um, so I can't really relate. Except like all those times you did drugs. But yeah. To being high and taking care of a kid. But I can tell you that I've seen a lot of people who have been on drugs and raised children. So we, as an evolved society, get involved. We steal people's children. And then we have no follow-up. There's no 40 year check. There's no 30 year check. So why a 40 year or a 30 year check? That doesn't even make sense, bro. That doesn't make sense at all. 40 year, like when you're out of your parents' custody for, I'm assuming like 30, I'm not 30 years, but you like long ass time, unless you're still living with your parents at 30 or 40 years old, that'd be fucking crazy too. Um, why are you checking? Like, I'm just, none of her shit makes sense. And she's just angry. She's just angry. Her kid got taken. I don't think that it's bad for people to worry about the welfare of a child when you and Xavier are living in a tent doing drugs all the time and then lying about it. Yeah, there's a lot of people who make it through foster care and they're okay. And there's a lot of people who are damaged for a very long time because of that system. So everything is a double-edged sword, you know? And before you do your research, you should understand that your opinions are, are mostly formed from bullshit. These are all your opinions, though, right, Heather? So I do a lot of research before I voice my opinions, especially on things like this. Look up the biology. Heather doesn't even know how to work her phone. I don't know where she's researching all these facts. Of a newborn baby and its mother. Look up all of the benefits of a newborn baby being with its biological mother. Does she think, does she think she's a surrogate mother? Because, like, her child is getting put up for adoption? Um, no. <laughs> I don't think she understands how surrogacy works. So I'm trying to eat really healthy and balanced. Enough carbs, enough protein for my breast milk ratios. I always freeze my breast milk to last my baby until they're six months old. With all my children, I've done that. So even if I stop breastfeeding, I still have six months worth of frozen milk. So... We're here at Aldi looking for some snacks for filling in. Um, those were weird, those white berries. That's what I want to know too, Angela. What is she doing with all this milk? She's just keeping it around. She's going to drive around for eight hours with it to drop it off somewhere where they're not going to give it to the kid. Like, I don't know, man. It's, just, it's sad, but it's also... Like, why aren't you taking the proper measures to get your kid back? You think they should be doing that instead of, well, maybe she isn't just bitching along the way. I guess I still, is it too early to tell? I don't know if she's on drugs or not. She seems kind of wonky. Why is she do? what is this about? Like, I don't, I don't read this yet, but Mother's Day blessings? It's not Mother's Day. She tripped me out. She made me think it was Mother's Day because I don't know when Mother's Day is. I just... People would be like, what are you doing for Mother's Day? I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's coming up. Um, I don't know what the fuck this is about. <laughs> More God shit, though. And then yoga toes. Blah. Yoga toes. So if you guys have been here um, for any amount of time. And then she's always just pump, pumping breast milk when she's doing these now. You know that I've been seeking employment my entire pregnancy. I'm pumping now, I'm saving all of my milk. You don't say, you don't, I couldn't tell. Milk. Freezing it for Weston. Um, if you guys read. I think she's, she wants two coolers. So I think she's just going to swap the, between the coolers. Like she should keep, like she'll freeze one and then use one to keep the breast milk person and then swap them. That's, that's my guess. I don't know. Unless she's like. Planning on making so much breast milk that she needs two? I don't, I don't know, though. Those letters of recommendation that I previously posted, and you have any private um, opportunities, please DM me. I have ex extensive amounts of experience in the medical, administrative, and clinical uh, fields, um, as well as numerous other fields. I mean, I've done everything from working in factories for 12-hour shifts um, to retail 
to entertainment and hospitality. Uh, there's really nothing it cannot do other than go longer than four to six hours without pumping. So she can do anything and everything, guys, which is why she can't find work anywhere. Please DM me with any opportunities. And that's how she applies for work, too, I think. I don't think she's actually, like, applying for work. I think she's just getting on Instagram and being like, this is what I can do. Someone hire me, please. Look how many jobs I've applied to. Look how many Instagram stories I've posted in the past year. I really think that that's what she's basing it off of. Or the one she's actually applying for, she's severely underqualified for. Um, Penasaurus, how you doing tonight? I don't know. She just like does these videos where she's pouring up some salts in the bath now. It's very good content. 40 more ounces of breast milk. 40 ounces. Like, I don't even know who is uh, donating to her at this point. Like, cause she's showing you she's like, she doesn't need, she doesn't need your money. She just wants like extra food. She just, it'd even be one thing if like she were to start a GoFundMe to be like, I need money for a down payment on an apartment or something. Some, something, but she's just like, I want to eat more food. Give me money. Uh, Xavier needs a bus pass because he spent his allowance on something or fucking, uh, he didn't get his allowance. So buy Xavier's bus pass for us, even though I'm pretty sure there's resources that'll give you a free bus pass. This is, this is her fucking way of thinking. So I was listening to a sermon just now, and I think that I have been still fucking confused about Jesus. Yeah, confused. A lot of people have been confused about um, Jesus, about the the lessons of Jesus. They call people Jesus, real live people, and you know who who are alive right now, and they say that they're Jesus, meaning that they have to die or be killed for the rest of us. Who is she talking about? Like, who is she talking about? I don't know anyone who's like, we got to kill this guy. He's Jesus. I, I've seen her people say, like, have that Messiah complex. Or no, is it not Messiah complex? I think it's like G Jerusalem syndrome or something where they think they're Jesus. But I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. Um, where is this Jesus? Yeah, where is he? Where is he? to be saved and that's not the way it is there's only one jesus and jesus is gone and and came back already and that is the reason why we're able to stay living and blessed even when we do things wrong we sin and then we are forgiven because jesus died the bible doesn't ask you or i to be jesus the bible doesn't ask us to sacrifice our children the Bible doesn't ask for any of that. All of those false messages are from Satan. I don't even know. I don't even know what to say to that. Like, why? Who's telling her to sacrifice? Maybe Satan. But where did Satan come into this? I don't fucking know. At least she's like got the three characters I'm aware of: fucking God, Jesus, and Satan. A self care sermons. No God. No hair cream. Ten dollars. I don't know if that's a typo. Uh, Freeman's France original sourced pink clay mask. Uh, the, the, I don't know. This is all a bunch of crap. This is all her crap. She has this. My usual skincare routine does not include any of these products. Uh, but what I'm working with what I have. But I'm working with what I have and taking care of myself to do the best of my ability at this time. Taking care of can't being kind to myself during this time of anxiety and confusion this is a whole but what do you mean i don't know that's a lot of stuff isn't it i don't i'm not a i'm not a lady so i don't use any of this shit <laughs> i don't know if it's a lot or a little she's listening to joel olstein is putting these ideas in her head about satan joel good old joel there was a shooting at joel olstein's uh church i don't know if you guys saw that it was crazy um, there's some ladies like you killed my kid, and she had a shotgun, and she's like fucking shooting it, and there's two security guards like pop them around the corner, and it was all it was fucking crazy. I don't know, Joel. Sounds like shit's not going well over there. 
So I got these products over time. Um, I've accumulated them through different purchasing, um, you know, options. I got the he the soap glory, soap and glory, I think it's called. Um, How is she getting all this? She she's a homeless person living in a homeless shelter. Is this from the donations? It's from the donations. Um, soap and glory is usually twenty dollars, but I got it for five dollars, so that's pretty good. Um, typically I feel tremendously guilty purchasing anything for myself. We see you do that all the time. What are you talking about? Buy tin foil a hundred dollars worth of tin foil, guys, for Incubus, uh, Stellar on the Moon doubloon photo shoot. Uh, but anyways, I, I feel guilty purchasing anything for myself. So I'm always looking for deals and specials. I usually get moisturizers and makeup at Ultra, but haven't felt like that since was acceptable since the homelessness began. Okay, she probably just solved the homeless problem. Solve the homeless problem before breakfast, guys. Remember when she said that? I don't know. There's still homelessness. Heal Rescue and the Hand Doctor for four ninety nine at Christmas. I got the Garnier, which is usually like twenty bucks for eight ninety nine at the Beauty Supply. Um, so I'm just getting stuff that I can really afford right now. But these are not the products that I usually use. So I'm very grateful to have them. They seem to be working well enough, um, but it's more so just the action of like loving yourself, you know, and giving yourself attention and healing yourself when, um, you know, you need it. So the products, they matter, um, but not as much as the action and the intention. So. It's good. It's good, Heather. I mean, like, I don't want to sitting in her own filth but i'm just saying like if i had just lost my kids that's probably what i'd be doing um but no at least like she's using whatever's available she making she seems ungrateful you know what i mean she's like i'm i'm working with dog shit over here guys but i'm making it work okay like it's like uh i would be worried about like way different things right now but that's all a double-edged sword all of it is a double-edged sword because double-edged sword and um i should have put double-edged sword on the bingo card clutch fuck i should have put clutch on the bingo card she says clutch so much this week i don't even know where clutch came from it's another there's another homeless person in the shelter who just meets up with outside and like oh it's so clutch this brand of cigarettes is so clutch bro when you're dealing with homelessness or poverty you can't get out of those situations looking like crap feeling like crap do we need to censor crap? You have to find a way to bring your mind to a space of deserving where you know you deserve more and you refuse to settle for less. That doesn't mean you're always, you know, forcing things. You have there are periods of waiting, there are periods of patience, et cetera, and so forth. But you have to still I remember when I thought this was a pillow with like a USB port. I still kind of think it looks more like a pillow with a USB port in someone's mouth. Then I said, what is that supposed to be? A wad of bills with, I don't know what the hell that is about. Anyways. Take care of yourself. In those times, it's even more important. I mean, imagine you're about to get a job offer, but you smell like crap and you haven't brushed your hair or brushed your teeth or put on any moisturizer or anything, who's gonna hire you? You know. Do you guys use moisturizer? I don't. I don't know. I feel like it would dry out your skin. Like moist. Use it. It's like, oh yeah, this is really nice, and then you become dependent on it, and that's the moisturizer game. So I'm not gonna fall for it because <laughs> I'm a crazy person. But uh, Alexis, thank you for the four dollars super sticker. So there's a there's a fine line between excessive spending and taking care of yourself and getting the things that you need to get yourself out of that situation you guys xavier and i need seven oh it's a cute fox seven day bus passes if you need seven day bus passes guys get the fuck on it you guys can donate for that cause we have a whole this is also a weird i gotta take the comment off to show you why is her face down here uh, to get the words up here Ah, this is a weird angle. Bunch of errands this week with regards to the baby um, and just next step processes. What errands does she need to run for the baby that she doesn't fucking have? You don't have any errands to run. And then, in another one, she's like, 
We ran all of Xavier's errands. What are Xavier's errands? Picking up money from his father or like selling NFTs, buying drugs. Like I would love to know what Xavier's errands are. We're still in the emergency 14 day housing and we're being placed in the next four to six days. Um, it's just been, we've been very grateful to be here, um, but we're very, very eager to get to the next step. Um, as I said, if anyone can help us out with those bus passes, I'm going to post my cash app. You can also use Google Pay. Um, it would be very much appreciated. I do have money for my bus pass, but we don't have money for Xavier's. And we don't know if his phone is back in tech box or what's going on because he has not been able to reach his father. His father was supposed to drop it off yesterday. Supposed to drop off the bus pass yesterday or money for the bus pass or what, what are we talking about here? We we're talking about slather, slither, slather. I think I saw, I did. Hold on. Xavier's chocolates, how you doing tonight? Um, and then we, I built a Shopify store yesterday really quickly with the LA Fresh um, hoodies. The hoodies that she's selling for $125 where she's bitch, she's bitching about other hoodies. She's like, I would love to wear this hoodie, but it's $200. Who would sell it for that much? This is evil. I'm saying like, it would be different if it's a, it's a designer. What Xavier's designs, Xavier, where he just searches just random addresses on Google fucking maps. And then goes to street view and sells that that's worth like a fucking $125. Just like, Bro, she's so, I don't know. I don't want to be mean, but she's more entertaining in the tent. She's just annoying this week, to me at least. So I was able to successfully populate with gelato. Clutch and fucking all this shit. Literally after I uploaded one product, it stopped allowing for full functionality. So I, I started uploading graphics from the Coco Coffee Table book that I want to sell on t-shirts and other merch through gelato. Gelato has a lot to offer. Um, everything stopped working. So it's just frustrating. Um, I know the way the way is just being inhibited from me. I know the way that's uh what is that? That's a star Wars thing. Um, and if you guys want to donate target is the gift card that I really need. Easter is this month or early next month. And I need to get the kids, the big kids, Easter baskets. Um, and if you guys have read my letters of recommendation and have any sort of caregiving work, um, online consultation work, data entry, anything, I'm incredibly intelligent and I can do anything. So please um, keep me in mind. I wish life were that easier. You could just say, I can do anything. And it's actually legit. You know? I guess Heather feels like she can do anything. I don't know why. I was feeling extra emotionally heavy after lunch. I laid down and took a nap. That's this red mark on my face. And I woke up and all my problems were solved. I'm working so hard, guys. I'm just napping while people pay for my shit. And I woke up and you guys had sent the bus pass money. Thank you so much. That means so much. That's like just one huge thing off the list, you know? So anyways, thank you guys very, very much. I really appreciate that. Um, uh, so she did the, we already saw the book club. Then she posted this, whatever the hell this is, uh, good sales only. So I have it. I have it for us. Like it's like going to play right next. Um, I don't know what it's going to be like. If it's too crazy, we'll skip over it. But, um, this is good sales only. How's it going, guys? Uh, my name is Heather, and you may know me from my variety show, The Coco Show. The the really bad podcast? It No one's in this room. There can't be. No one hired her to do this. What does this say? Marketing Principles. Good sales only by Heather Gillespie. Why didn't you just write on the whiteboard? Why do you have a fucking a piece of paper on the whiteboard? Isn't that redundant? Whatever. Some people call me Coco. Um, you also may know me from some writing. Wait, why is the whiteboard like not? That's really <laughs> crooked. Thing that I've done, um, I posted a blog um, and written 
several other publications, as well as I'm in the midst of writing my very first book. So very exciting. Um, I do have a pretty extensive. I like how she didn't finish the first book before starting the coffee table book. Employment history, um, varying in markets from healthcare, healthcare administration, law and ethics, sales, marketing, uh, entertainment, uh, hospitality. Um, I've even worked in factories and retail, uh, so pretty much you name it. And uh, she looks oh, fucking hella different. She looks almost, and she's like really far away too, right? So if you were to like be just walking by, seeing her peripheral, you'd be like, "That's a normal woman." Yeah. I've done it for you know a little while. I've worked in radio. I've worked in promo, um, promo modeling, uh, and and other various sales jobs. Um, there's no actual people here though. So you don't need to say any of that. You could just get to the, the lessons you're trying to instill on us. Trade show modeling, which incorporates a lot of fundamentals of sales. Um, and you're given, you know, a product that you learn and deliver to the customer in a formal trade show setting. Um, some that you may recognize would be the auto show, um, the boat show, um, boat and fishing show, the NRA National Restaurant Association, um, just to name a few. So what I want to talk to you guys about the National Restaurant Association, is that a real thing? Up today is um, a blog post that I've written that outlines how to sell. A Isn't the NRA the National Rifle Association? Is she getting her things mixed up? Product um, morally and ethically with integrity. Um, and we'll start off by defining the word integrity. This is a huge theme. All right, I put a poll. If you want, if you want to, me to skip this, let me know. Um, and if more of you say, yeah, let's get this the fuck on, um, then we will. I think Heather, that's <laughs> someone said in their human suit. I can't remember who said it. That's good though. Yeah, it's interesting. Not only for sales, but also for life. Um, so integrity is defined as soundness, robustness, strength, sturdiness, solidity, solidness, etc. In other words, you want to make sure that your product and the delivery of your product is conveyed accurately to your customer or Okay. Yeah. That's a pretty much, that's like all yes is pretty much. Okay. Well, if you guys want to watch that, it's her fucking, whatchamacallit, um, sales ethics thing. Where the hell is the, oh, this always happens. I already have it all the way up too. What the fuck? Okay. Um, 13. Oh, okay. We weren't that far off. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. I gotta go. She goes for a while. Um, oh, and then she goes to the gym. Do you guys want to see her in the gym? We'll skip the gym. We'll go back to the gym if you want after. Um, but yeah, she linked both of these old streams for whatever reason. I guess she thought they were important. I don't. Maybe she's trying to show her diverse character, her portfolio to the masses, you know? Uh, this is back in the present day. Um, somewhere around here. Also, I'm fairly certain that there's something weird going on with the phone numbers again. With the phone numbers? I've been trying to call the judicial system. And the phone numbers that are turning up Google results are ringing to Google voicemails. Like generic voicemails. You know how you call the courthouse? They're like... Thank you for calling the circuit clerk of the United States of America or whatever they say. I, I don't know. You would know because you call all these places every day, right? They're not saying anything like that. They're going to a voicemail that's like, your party cannot pick up the phone right now. Please leave a message after the beep. So I'm pretty sure there's something nefarious going on. What else is new? All right. So we're picking up. A <laughs> what else is new? The gym is good. We can go back to the gym after, um, but we'll get through like the, the stuff from this week first. A few groceries for my baby. 
And then I'm heading to a doctor's appointment to get dates and times of all of the medical care that I've received over the last five years. And then we're heading back to check on the status of our belongings being stored at the Yacht Club. Like, does the Yacht Club know they're storing their belongings? Like, what did they say to the Yacht Club? Hey, you guys are really rich. Could you just, like, let us put our tent over there? We're going to go have a baby and go to rehab and try to get the baby back. But eventually we're going to want our, we're going to want our tent stuff. So can we just keep it here? And they were like, or are they just like hiding it somewhere? They, they don't know. The yacht club is closed. So they probably don't know. Okay. In Lakeview. And then we're heading back to the shelter. So. And that was a really fast shot of a baby Xavier. Baby Xavier Weston, um, baby Rico with something, something is that, was he in the NICU? I don't really want to focus on it too much. He was rocking headphones, beats headphones. No, I wasn't. Um, but I don't know why she's posting stuff like that. I saw my doctor and now we're back. This is the first day I've been moving around pretty much since the baby, except for the seven miles I walked three days postpartum to get here. Um, everything was pretty normal at the visit. Is that why she's paranoid about the numbers and all they've been changed or whatever and shit? Other than that, uh, just some other random stressful things. Um, but we're staying strong and focused and... Ah, maybe, maybe she's tweaking. She's like checking her eyes, making sure she doesn't look... Hi. Just strong and focused. We're going back out because... Because there's pizza, and Heather hates pizza. She has, like, a trauma to it or something. Usually the dinners here are really healthy and like delicious and balanced, but today it's really greasy pizza. And all I had today so far was a tamale with green chili and chicken. It was delicious. After Do you think she's just, like going out to do drugs when I come back. And then she's like itching to do more drugs. She's like pizza. Cause she, like I said at the beginning, um, at the breast milk menu, there's pizza on there. So she was eating pizza the other days. I don't know why pizza is such a crazy thing for her now. I do remember she was like, Chicago is flooded because of cheese pizza. Stop giving everyone cheese pizza. So maybe it's something like that. I don't know. After my appointment. So that's not that healthy, and I need to get something that's more balanced. So we are going back out. Did she blame the shit and the chocolate on the cheese pizza, too? I don't remember that. But I, I remember the city being flooded. And I didn't really know who Heather was at the time. Like, that was actually, I think, the very first thing I ever saw of Heather. And New York was being flooded at the same time. And I thought she was in New York. And I was like, Heather thinks New York is flooded because of cheese pizza. But it's Chicago to grab a sandwich and then we're going back in <sighs> um, other than that I'm ready for bed and thoroughly exhausted but it's a beautiful day today I think it was 70 which is weird for March and Shy good morning you guys um I don't think it was <laughs> I don't think it was headphones I think it's it was like um life detecting equipment Maybe was it headphones? Should we just see? Let's just go back and see. All right, let's. Um, 107. Why can I see the ball today? It's weird. I think we're way over here, though. Okay, I think that's the ball. 107. Yeah, it is. Um, where was he? It was around here, I think. So before or after this? And now we're back. I think it was before this. Before this. No, that's way too far back. Um, it happened so fast. Okay, it has to be after this, right? It was pretty. And then I'm heading to a doctor's appointment to get dates and times of all of the medical care that I've received over the last five years. It was after this, right? It was after the bread. I think it has to be after the bread. 
And then we're heading back to check on the status of our belongings being stored at the Yacht Club in Lakeview. And then we're heading back to the shelter. There. Yeah, I was right after the... Okay, so this is... They're not headphones. Maybe they're headphones. No, I don't think they're headphones. I don't know what it is. But it doesn't look... It's scary looking. That's why I don't like it. Maybe this is what normal babies look like. Do they give them headphones like that? I don't know. They look like uh, like when you jump a car. The the red cable. and the, Usually the black cable. The blue cable. I don't know what's happening here. You guys. Some of you have kids. You'll know what this is. Uh, let's go back to... Heather the... Um, all right. This is a standard hearing. Is it a hearing test? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's, I don't know. I thought it was like, I don't know. I don't know. I, like I said, it scared me. So I was like, ah. Which is weird. I thought I took it out of this. Scared for March and Shy. Good morning, you guys. So I just woke up at five to pump. And usually I wake up every three to four hours or five. If I She's whispering again. I think it's to not wake Xavier up. Even though she didn't give a fuck about waking him up before when she was in the tent. I push it to pump, and this was like six or seven hours. It felt like literal like cement deposits all around my breast. It was so hard and engorged. So I just pumped eight ounces from that. I'm curious what other moms with a two-week postpartum baby are pumping. I'm pumping like eight ounces every, I don't know, five to six hours. Uh, my thing glitched here. I don't know what happened. This is the only time it glitched this week, though. She also ends up like leaking this week. I don't know how, but like one of her one of her titties just starts leaking, and then that was a really quick flippy hair. And she basically was like, "This is the first time I've cleaned up since uh, I gave birth," even though she's just going on about her whole self care regimen before. Um, and now she's at the Fiesta Grill. What? It's only a dollar fifty ground beef chicken taco. What? Uh, maybe I should go live in Chicago. Be a homeless person in Chicago. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at this sope. A dollar fifty tacos. That's insane. That's all a dollar fifty. Not in this world today. This is a steal. This is the only good thing Heather's ever brought into my life is knowing about these. Where is this? <laughs> Oh, Fiesta Girl. I'm I am not looking with my eyes. I got more milk shots. So, like, I don't... She's not in the tent anymore. It still looks, like, off color to me. I don't like it breast milk every day, though. I am pumping literally half or a third. That's still pretty good, Kelly. $1.50 per taco. I mean, like, what's Taco Bell at right now? I think I pay like $5 a taco when I order Taco Bell. I think it's like $4.19 before tax. So it's like basically $5 a taco. It's insane. That's Taco Bell. Like what the fuck? In the left as the right. And it's not because it's only creating a third. It's creating the same amount, but it's leaking out of the, the left all day. And I have a big like reusable breast pads. I don't have the um, uh, throwaway one. 199 is that a, i'm in canada so maybe taco bell is a little bit a little bit cheaper in america the conversion on that would be like what 299 maybe maybe 250 that's still cheaper than what i pay i'll get the i'll get the app open right now so i'm using like these inserts and they work to keep my shirt dry but i would like to have that milk you know it's just leaking out all day yeah, I know. We we got to freeze more of the milk that's not going to go anywhere. Anyone else have that problem? So I'm in desperate need of panties. So we came to Nordstrom Rack. Look at these. They have skims, thong for six bucks, basic. It's perfect for when you're wearing leggings, whatever. But then right next door to this $6 pair of skims, we have a $40 pair of skims. Why? Because it has rhinestones? 
come on guys the consumer set the price if we were unwilling to pay this they'd be unwilling to price them at this what the fuck is this wait what why why is this happening right now what are we looking at um there's a lot of stuff at Taco Bell I can't eat. I'm just trying to find the hard tacos. Like one hard taco. What does that cost, bro? That's all I want to know. Um, not two taco supremes. All right. Well, two Doritos Locos tacos with uh, fries and pop. It's like $12. So what is... Oh my God. Well, you can get... Well, okay. Maybe it'd be worth it. You can get... How many tacos is that? Oh, only 10? 10 for $40. So that's like $4. So I think you're saving about a dollar. So that's like discounted. Oh, you can't even see it's too bright. But yeah, so $40 for 10 tacos. That's what uh, Taco Bell's prices are for me. Why is... What is this, though? What are we looking at with Heather? Me trying to get into a size six, which is what I wore before the baby was born, is not happening. What are we doing here? <laughs> Conclusions. We are leaving with the three pairs of panties. If you want to sponsor my next pair of gym shoes, please send via e-gift card or cash app. Today, I'm only getting the underwear. Why does she look so upset? The size sixes are $30 and I have no jeans, nothing but leggings. And the size eights are $50 and I don't want to spend $50 on one pair of jeans because I need underwear also. Also, look at my gym shoes, you guys. So the Star and Circles people, they're members. There's the membership link because, I don't know, YouTube's like broken or something. It's in the description. <laughs> So you guys get like emojis you can use and stuff. Um, and then I do like members only streams once a week that are just like silly, silly things, silly, not important things. Cause I wouldn't want to keep anything from like the people who don't want to pay. So I, I would just like to have emojis without having the people pay, have people pay. But if you want emojis and stuff, it's like a dollar. It's in the description. Can you guys see that? What? What are we looking at? Her broken heel? You see that there's no sole on the outside? None whatsoever? I have no idea how that happened. So, postpartum shopping is depressive. But if you guys are not postpartum and you want to come grab some good American jeans that are usually over $100, they're on sale for 30 bucks at Nordstrom Rack. Got some panties. Also found a full-length mirror and realized that my leggings are see-through. Oh, uh, okay. My underwear are visible, as is my postpartum pad. So I'm absolutely humiliated walking around with my North Face, like, pulled down as low as I can get it. And we're going to go try to find a Salvation Army so that I can get a longer jacket. You guys have been speaking. How do you not notice that? before you leave like how do, how do you not how do you not know that your clothes are see-through or not does that happen i've never known that a piece of clothes that i own is not see-through a lot lately on this candace owens rhetoric um she's taking a lot of slack from or flack from the community of trans um i haven't heard much argument from the gay and lesbian community Okay. What did she do? I need some better context. So, like, okay, the trans people are matter. The gay and lesbians, they seem to be okay with her, though. Are we going to get into every little nick and cranny here? What about the asexual people? What about, um, I don't know. There's, like, a whole bunch now. Against her, mostly from the trans community. And I just wanted to say that um, the only point I really strongly disagree with her on is the part about love. I don't think these... What did Candace Owens say? Do I have to go find Candace Owens' video? Trans kids are getting too much love. I think they've been incredibly rejected in their home lives a lot of time and feel incredibly misplaced, displaced, or on their own. And that loving them is definitely the answer. 
But therapy is also the answer. You know, we don't have to change our minds and say, oh, well, you have a penis, but you say you're a woman. So I guess you're a woman. We can still stick with our rhetoric and be loving. I don't think that anger and hatred. Um, and with that being said, there's this other account, this Charlie account from Turning Point America or Turning Point USA. Um, I'm going to tag it right here where he says something critical and crucial. And he says, when the rhetoric stops, when the conversation stops, that's when the abuse, the civil unrest begins. When people feel so terrified to speak on anything that's going on or how they feel about what's going on. I don't think Heather's ever been too scared to talk about what's going on in her mind. Who's this guy? I've never heard of him before. Charlie Kirk. You're influencing Heather to, I don't know. Try to cozy up to the, the right wing people. Just, I think she's just trying to find a community. I think she feels a little vulnerable. She'd like a community probably to have her back. Or at least someone to like lean on right now. That's not fucking Xavier. The most useless man on the planet. I'd probably be nice if she had like a couple friends. Or like peers, right? I don't think it's going to happen. Because <laughs> it's Heather Gillespie. But um, I guess I understand why she's trying to do it. Um, violence ensues. And I think that that's very important as well. Um, I'm going to tag the account. I think that our hardest and most difficult conversations are also our most productive ones. Um, and that the, the people who should be engaging in rhetoric are the people who see things differently because it provides us all with opportunity to meet each other halfway. Others call it can be like Xavier, Cashy. There's a couple, there, there's a couple accounts that are like you are bad for, I don't know, making content about Heather, but it's like, I don't know. <laughs> Make content on me then. Be like, Steve is evil. You gotta stop watching him. Oh, all right. You know what would be fantastic if I could find some influencers, and if you know of any of them, please tag them right here. Put them right here in this little box. If I could find any influencers who have been permitted the grace to evolve who have begun very much like a candace owens in a conservative uh, i'm sorry very liberal um viewpoint and who have evolved into either conservatives or changed their career or changed their niche or changed their anything why she's just trying to get into like politics i guess but she's not i don't know can a homeless person become a politician? Has that ever been done before? I've seen comedians become politicians. I've seen Sir Average Joe become politician. I don't think I've ever seen a homeless person become a politician. Maybe she's not trying to be a politician. Maybe she's just trying to make political content, but I think that's not going to work too well either. And, and stood the test of time through social media and influencing. This is such an unforgiving platform in so many ways. Not Maybe she could be like the weather girl for the Gala News Network. Like, I just got off the phone with my dad. There's a tornado coming. Watch out, Gala sisters. You know, maybe she could do something like that. A platform, but uh, social media in general. How can we create the opportunity for growth and evolution without punishing us for who we once were, who our unenlightened selves were? I don't think Heather's enlightened. Uh, what does this say? I'm two weeks, two weeks postpartum and de desperate to work out again by getting super pained after only walking but a mile or so. My doctor said to listen to my body and that I have a fitness training background, so I knew, so I knew that already. But I'm feeling guilty and lazy uh, for not being able to do more. I mean, like anything. Oh, uh, she's back in church. Well, she went to church. I think she went twice this week, actually. This is the iconic St. James Cathedral with amazing architecture and stained glass art, unlike any of the churches in my neighborhood growing up. That's pretty fancy. Uh, regard your servant's prayer, our lo our Lord, my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servants pray to you today. 
on Kings. I don't know. I don't know nothing about them. Hello, my flock. What's this thing? This thing looks cool. Is this where the holy water comes out of? Oh, that's a cross. Is that holy water? Is it like a fountain? Is this a sundial? I'm just walking too fast. This is the church, guys. We could live here. Well, no, probably not, actually. So while Xavier and I were dealing with homelessness um, for those 377 plus days that we I thought it was um, 65, 365 days, like on the dot, right? Because she was like, oh, uh, it was Valentine's Day, and then it was the 19th, so 65 plus 4 would be like 69, 369 days. Where did the 77 come from? I've been listening to Heather for like months now, so that's that's the fucking math that she gave me. Am I wrong? We were having nowhere to sleep or sleeping in the tent. There were several times when we did not feel safe. Um, this was more than a year ago when we didn't even have a tent at one point. This church, St. James, opens their doors from 10 a.m., I believe, to 5 or 6 p.m. And they allowed us to sleep in the pews during the day. Um, we would stay awake at night, and this was the only place that we could find that was warm and heated that would let us sleep. So I'm trying to um, just donate little small funds rather than helping people in person who I see in the street with the dollar, or three dollars or whatever I can give, because sleep, I believe, is the best gift for anyone, especially someone who is sleep deprived. We Wait, what is she trying to do for them? Try to give them sleep? What? We don't have the right mindset when we are sleep deprived. Um, so that's why I donate here. Um, and if you guys can donate, I'm sure it would be greatly appreciated. Don't. All right, I don't know. I got lost for a second. I'm off in my own world. I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. Um, perhaps instead of focusing on someone's reactions to abuse, uh, society, I think there's supposed to be a comma there, society should start focusing on the actual abuse they're reacting to. I think it's also. I thought it meant like abuse society. The rhetoric, oh, the rhetoric around helping others is tremendously skewed. We need to help others, and only after making sure we ourselves are okay. Think about the oxygen oxygen mask plane example. That's that's what it says. Think about the oxygen mask on the plane example. So important to discuss how, depending on where you are at in life, um, with regards to education, money, housing. Helping yourself is helping others, um, especially if you have children. But let's talk about it. Say you have $100 left in, to your name total, and you donate $4. That's 4% 4 of your net worth. If someone with $100,000 in their bank account donates 4%, that's four grand. If someone with a million dollars in their bank account donates 4%, that's $40,000, right? $40,000? Yeah, $40,000. So This is all reasons why Heather doesn't need to work in her head because like eventually a really rich person is going to donate 4% of their income to me. So all we got to do is just keep getting donations. All we got to do Xavier is have another kid and pull on the heartstrings of these people until they just cave and give us money. And then we never have to work another day in our lives. So this is why like, I think Heather should have her tubes tied probably. Um, I don't know. Xavier should <laughs> She can't have accepted me. <laughs> Poor Xavier. I don't even know, man. I, 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 just give Xavier drugs. Like, it's just shit that'll like take out his sperm. That'd be fine. I'm gonna do it that way. So, if we can stop holding each other accountable for what we don't do, and all do what we can, while putting first ourselves. Um, we can make everything better, you know, but don't, don't call people selfish because they have a hundred in the bank and they give away four. No one's doing that. No one's, e no one's even thinking about any of this. You guys have been super clutch with your advice lately. 
super clutch guys you was super clutch with your advice look at this some lady told me to get this i'm gonna have to start walking around with this in my bra it's called the haka milk collector and apparently you just put it in the one side that's leaking and all of those ounces can be saved look at this uh oh no this is her resume um why is this so small I'm not reading all this. <laughs> what? But basically, um, that's what any other employer is going to say, too. I'm not reading all of this. I don't make a decision by Tuesday. And today is uh, Monday. And GoPro Solo is listed in her first thing of experience. What? Skills. Sales. Maybe I'm going to read some of this. Um, sales. Website development and copy. Social media. Why is all this under one scale? Bilingual and conversation and conversational Spanish. Um, Microsoft Office ability to multitask, coordinate meetings, um, experience. I don't know what CRM is. Uh, highly effective communicator. All right. Well, that isn't like the worst. It's still a lot of skills. You just like four skills usually. Uh, GoPro Solo is your experience as self-employed fucking 2015 to the present. What else have we got? I'm not reading all that. We know what GoPro Solo is. It's, we live it every day, every day on Friday. And then we got uh, Northwestern Hospital. She probably just put that there instead of uh, GoPro Solo. Then RSA humans. What the fuck does that mean? What? She worked as a human? Okay. Am I going crazy? Hold on. I am going crazy. That says humana. Never mind. <laughs> humans. What do you mean humans? I'm going. Yeah, okay. Let's just. Education. Uh, Shaw marketing principles. I don't know what that is. Online. Just an online course for marketing. Why you, you don't need to go? You don't need to take a marketing course. Um, you can just go market shit. Actually, maybe maybe you should take a marketing course. I don't know. Midwest Center for Health. What? This is where she her education was. I don't know. I'm going crazy again. That's um American Intercontinental. University online campus. So what is this? It's just all online, online shit. Triton College, uh, Illinois School for Medical Careers, First Institute Online, High School Diploma. There you go. I hate white screens. Everything should just be on a black screen. I'd make the world so much better. I don't know why we got white screens. Come on, switch. Well, but, oh my god! I, I'm, not, I'm not reading any of that. If you guys want to read it, you can read it. It's a fake letter of recommendation. And more fake. Why Why do I have this in here? Okay, I started skipping through faster. Maybe I didn't. We've read these before. That's why I'm like, I, I don't think they should even be in here. And then we get the press pump, a picture of breast pump, and then cash up, and then this thing. I have to say, um, with regards to the Turning Point USA uh, speakers pump. who I have been talking about for the past several days, they're creating a safe space for people to believe normal things, traditional things. They're allowing us to feel safe in our values of family and traditional family styles um and who is trying to make you feel unsafe people can do especially in your own family you can do whatever you want within the law like you can have your family run as however it wants there's nothing wrong with that you know that's it's that's amazing i feel like so many of these college campuses and young people environments were getting overcrowded with these extreme liberal ideas to the point where you don't even feel safe to have a conservative perspective anymore um so 
listen to some of her stuff, Candace Owens or Charlie. I don't know the other speakers, but it's. I don't, I don't know these people. It's just, it's a safe space. And my last thing on the subject is that maybe I should listen to Silent just to see what Heather's up to. Just to see who she's listening to, I guess. Um, I personally, I do know uh, a few people who identify as trans. Um, I don't call them anything, you know, other than what they ask to be called just out of respect. But if I didn't know them um, and I called them a boy and they were a girl or wanted to be called a girl, they wouldn't jump down my throat over it. Um, these are reasonable people. So while I do think that there is, you know, a certain demographic who's committed to arguing and tormenting, there's also one that just wants to be left alone. And that's fine too, you know, to each their own, um, you know, let live and let live, so to speak, as long as you're not causing harm to others, live and let live. But in the same sense, you have to allow people to live and let live who want to believe in traditional family roles and gender roles and, you know, relationships that are monogamous. Um, like, okay. I don't think she gets it. <laughs> I just don't think she gets it. So no one is saying that you can't be straight and have like a, a normal family with traditional roles or whatever. And I did the point of, the LGBT community, I think I'm not part of the LGBT community, so I shouldn't be speaking for them. That's why I, I wouldn't say anything like this unless Heather Gillespie was talking a bunch of shit. But like, I think they just want to be accepted, right? Like, they don't want you to think they're weird or whatever. Um, th their traditional values are different than your traditional values, but you can both have them. Like, you can just like you can live your own lives, and it doesn't need to be. She's it's weird because she's like, oh, everything's crazy. But you're like co-opting with people who sound like they want to have a division or else they wouldn't have a fucking uh, content to make, would they? Which are my beliefs. Like, I don't know shit about Candace Owens, but if this is what's going through Heather's mind after watching her, like it sounds like it's someone who just who would rather there be um, a divide so they could capitalize off it. Huge thank you to Nordstrom and to the 900 North building for having breast pumping restroom facilities. Mama Mia, what's what is Nordstrom? Um, they're, I don't know what Nordstrom is. They have free of toilet, a sofa, a comfortable chair where you can pump or nurse. That is so clutch. Can I tell you guys that hospitals don't have that? It's wild to me. These are medical institutions. You would think they'd be the first ones. They don't. Um, so if you're a mom in the Chicago area. You have like your own room at the hospital, though, when you're breastfeeding. Why would you just be visiting the hospital as a breastfeeding mom? Unless you're Heather Gillespie and your kid's being kept in the NICU and you're not even supposed to be there. But like you're going to be there anyways kind of thing. Like I just that's probably the reason why. Area and you need to nurse or breast. Uh, pump they have rooms at if you're on the south side they have them at mccormick place you uh -huh. don't need to pay to get in they have multiple of them they look like the ones in the i mean that makes sense why they would have like a, a fucking breast pumping area in their store if they would have to be really expensive <laughs> why is she in such an expensive store if she's homeless technically still airport um they have them at the 900 north building they have them at the nordstrom at northbridge um, also, Heather, why are you yelling? I can hear the echo. <laughs> Imagine walking into this store and you're walking by the like breast pump room, she's just like yelling into her phone about how great it is. And Nordstrom has this room where she can pump her milk that's not going to touch the lips of any child. Um, and if I come up on any other ones, I'll let you guys know. Those are the only three places that I know of having them right now, but they are so clutch. Cool and asking God for help when you feel like you've been tested so much that you should be questioning things. But instead of questioning them, you just keep on talking to God. You guys, I've been praying my entire life and I have to believe of all the spiritual- I've never heard other pray other than when she's angry or something or trying to prove a point and telling Jehovah God to smite everyone down spite smite strike 
I don't know. I don't know. The, you guys know what I'm trying to say. I don't know, though. Beliefs like karma, God, um, the universe, law of attraction, all of that. Like, I have to believe that my time is, is coming. Like, it's my time. It's my season to win. God willing. I blame 8 Mile for this shit. All he did in 8 Mile was go to work and like write some fucking rap music on the bus. And his time was coming. And then like he won a rap battle, but he went back to work the next day. And that was the end of the movie. But then like people take away, he's like, but he's Eminem. So he became Eminem after that. But like you can't just sit around on your ass and not do anything, Heather. Writing fucking crazy manifestos being like, that's my coffee table book in the, the novel. Um... It, you have to have some substance behind your shit. Even Eminem did more than just sit on a bus and go to work, scribbling on a notepad and fighting with people at some fucking dive bar. Get some good news, you guys. Please keep my family in your prayers. And for everyone who's been praying, donating, sponsoring, being a friend, very, very, very much appreciated. And thank you again. I don't say thank you enough. Thank you very much. If I say thank you once a day, it's not enough. So... Thank you very much. And I do mean that. If you have a child and you don't want it, I do think you should be ashamed for it. And what's more... I don't know which rap battle it is in 8 Mile, but I like the one where he talks about Leave It to Beaver. I'm like, I like Leave It to Beaver. Leave It to Beaver is Jerry Mathers, and he's Eminem's Marshall Mathers. And I was always like, I wonder if they're related. Like estranged cousins or some shit it's going to be difficult it's hard it takes selflessness so refine your personal skills learn how to become selfless and take care of your children audrey inspired photography in the south loop nursing room at nordstrom this is like it's like cribs but at nordstrom like i'm learning a lot like she's super excited about this so no toilet, but you can wash your hands, you can nurse, you can pump, and no one will bother you. And yesterday I was talking about how the right gets way more than the left. That's not that's not the right color. Like this is this is white and this is like gray alien milk or something. I don't know. I I don't know. What is this? What is the well hold up? What is this though? Is she just writing that for fun or is she actually what is this bag? Maybe it's for like actual mothers? But the left is always leaking. Okay, what is this? Um it's so the date and the kid's name. Keeping oh my god. Keep going so they can keep growing. Okay. I think it's just milk bags. It's called let let down or something like that. My bra is always wet on the left side. So some ladies told me about this haka thing. I, I posted it yesterday. Uh, Look at the milk. That is so rich in nutrients. That almost doesn't look as bad. But it looks bad there. This is like chaotic, little short ones. Mother's Lounge. And then she did, I don't know, this Facebook post for everyone can, whoops, for everyone expressing concern. Let me just say, I cannot get into details, but please pray for our re reunion ASAP. I have complete faith in God, and I know he walks with me through this fire. Um, so I don't know. I think she's... She thinks if she just says it out loud a bunch, it'll happen. Just like, oh, someone will show up with the keys to the apartment. It didn't happen. Um, what are all the other things she says are going to happen that don't happen? Pretty much everything. She's a terrible Notre Dame. Now we're back at the church. This, a little bit of this book. The Church of the City, a social history of 150 years at St. James, Chicago. In here, in the beginning, like in 
between pages 50 and 60, they discussed that in the 1860s, 1820s to 60s, there was still nothing but open land in Chicago and that men were traveling here to stake claims on the land. And to me, I'm sorry, do I have a Michael? To me, it's like how- This is a history lesson. This is a history lesson about how Heather can't just like go find a piece of land and be like, that's fucking mine now. How does our, uh, our generation stand a single chance when just a hundred and less than 150 years ago, all you had to do to get your own land was find it and say, this is mine now, right? And then drop a deed and it was yours. It's not that way for us. It, it's supposed to be that way. We can't create more land and then we get- It's supposed to be that, you know how much of the planet isn't like occupied, Heather? Go buy a plot of land. Go, go buy a plot of land. You could. I could. I was thinking about it. Up in Cochrane, there's this place called Cochrane. It's like, I don't know, six hours from me. North, where the polar bears live. Uh, they're selling like plots of land for $10. 10 fucking dollars. I'd have to build a house or contract somewhere. Buy one of those like, they sell, was it Home Depot houses? It's either Home Depot or somewhere else. Um, like 20 grand and it's like the shit shack, <laughs> something like that. But like, it's, it's possible is what I'm saying. You can still get land. There's places where you can get land. There might not be anything on the land. And into these predatory, unrealistic bank deals that are called mortgages that no one ever actually gets to pay off. If your family didn't. How did the Amish do it then, Heather? How did the Amish do it? She should go be Amish. Happen to get any land. Be good for her. Detox from all the social media crap. She won't have any followers. She won't get any donations. She'll just have to like be out on a field and fucking work. And you've been a renter or you've been. She wouldn't have to worry about her kids getting taken away. A slave or an employee. Or you got maybe a couple pieces of land, like a couple pieces of property but not enough for your whole entire family. Now that my father, thank you for the two. Heather, mine, mine, mine. Everything is mine. Yeah. What's the evolution of that? Like, this is shocking to me. I, I guess I never really made the connection that at some point in time, no one owned everything and people had to like take ownership. So that's why generationally we stay at these disadvantages. Because if our families didn't like run over and grab something while it was there, then we stay stuck. How, how, how could this be true? This is alarming to me. <laughs> this is alarming to me. I guess you got to go to Mars. Go to Mars. There's lots of places though. There's lots of places that we haven't even explored. Um, right. I'm pretty sure because there's like tribes that we haven't even like touched in our Antarctica. There's nothing really out there, but I'm sure there's places. So I just wanted to tell you guys, I am at Nordstrom. Um, we just got done running Xavier's errands. This muse filter is everything. Um, and I sprayed myself with. I got to try this muse filter. I got to see what all the hype is about. One spray of Chance Chanel on the left wrist and one spray of Joe Malone, Oud, and Bermagat, which are my all-time favorite uh, aromas. And the change in mood coming from like the nasty, stinky bus to this beautiful environment that's just aesthetically extremely incredibly pleasing. You're insane. You're a fucking insane one. <laughs> I feel bad saying that. Like, I, uh, just, I don't like anything she has to say this week at all the aroma is absolutely to die for and just pumping in itself releases serotonin oh, because you're it. providing for your for your baby oh my god it's a definite vibe you guys it is a vibe for sure xavier wants to go to navy pier after this i'm trying to just run around getting exercise we've fulfilled all of our other duties so feeling good how do you use filters on instagram it's impossible. That was also just a very weird closeout. Okay, so I guess like I have to put the other stuff on um, from the the last of the stuff. I gotta airdrop it. Um, so while it's while it's airdropping, I guess we'll do the smoke break when I get back. 
I'll show you guys the milk. <laughs> the fucking the Canadian milk. And then we'll finish up. Um, how long did she? Let me see here. Let me see how much more we got. Um, 18 minutes. How much of this is like other crap though? Here, one second. Okay, so it's actually... What the fuck is that? 15 minutes plus. Oh, so fairly big chunk. Uh, ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Let me see here. How are we going to do this? Uh, we'll do... I got this guy. Here, you guys can do space today. Uh, I should have done this and it was share that instead. And then, um, yeah, I'll be back in like a hot second, a hot second.
Okay. Uh, uh. All right. Um, are you guys ready? Are you guys ready to see the craziest thing in the world? I don't need this anymore. I can close that. Um, once I get this open, share this into. Uh, pop this over here. Shut up, Gary V. Shut up, Gary V. What are you doing? He's there. He's there being Gary V. Wait. Okay, there we go. Um, and close that. Close this for a second. All right. This is the. Uh -oh. All right, this is the milk, the Canadian milk. Um, so Canadian milk, it comes in. These, these are the bags it comes in. Isn't that weird? So that's a, this is a bag of milk. This is milk and freeze. This is a frozen, frozen bag of milk. This is what happens when you freeze milk. I'll, I'm gonna break <laughs> the members only video. Um, then it comes in like bigger, so it's a bag in a bag. And that's why I was like, why can't we have plastic grocery bags if we're just like putting milk in bags anyways? And then uh, you have to put the milk in this thing, which also comes with this to like open the milk. And then, um, here, I'll show you, I'll show you what that's like. And then it uses a bread tag. And this is chocolate milk. <laughs> chocolate milk in a, in a bag. It goes like that. Um, and then you use this little thing here. Go like this. And open it. And it goes, but I don't want to drink chocolate milk. Because um, I'm drinking Mountain Dew. That doesn't really go well today. But... Um, <sighs> Yeah, now I gotta put all this milk away, and <laughs> then we'll be good to go. So let me get Heather back up here. Um, this is the one I want. And uh, yeah, give me just a second. Give me a second while I, I guess I can play your stuff while I'm putting it away, but I'm gonna, eh, that'll be fine. I have been getting a lot of uh, flack for the comment I made about not being an adoption or yeah surrogacy and i stand true to my original beliefs and opinions people are not lining up to adopt babies of the addicted so when you use the argument like oh well a woman was on drugs and so i rushed in and i felt like adoption was the best solution for the baby these these self-righteous people who give the false aura of being godly they're not running into addicts saying oh let me help rehabilitate your baby have you ever seen a baby born on some sort of heavy substance like crack or heroin or whatever else they have I, i'm not an expert on drugs they cry a lot they shake they have withdrawal symptoms do you see any of these hoity-toity um oh we have to save the children adopting babies like that no, they're not. They're not rushing in. And if I were going to believe with adoption, in adoption, my, my, my bad, that's, what, that's the only applicable context that I would agree with it in. That the child is at such risk that, you know, maybe they would benefit from some stable parents. Definitely not someone like myself or other people who... What about Xavier? Xavier's on... So you can say, I'm not on drugs. I'm not on drugs. The DC, they just lie and make stuff up. They 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 can just say that I'm on drugs without me having to do a drug test. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, that's just that's a whole bunch of crazy shit, bro. Um, Heather, Heather, Heather. So she's angry. She's angry because she's on drugs. This is a very specific scenario that she's describing because there's lots of other scenarios like ch child being abused, um, parents just being neglectful, um, them not having adequate living situations, which is what I thought you, that's, that's your 
situation, right, Heather? You don't have a house. You're living in a tent. That's what you said when you were flashing that forum and stuff. Well, that's what you said it said when you're flashing the farm. You're like, look, it's just because I'm homeless and they're going to give me a house. So I'm not homeless. Look at this face she's making. I don't know. She's just like, she's on one. She is just out to piss everybody off. She's doing a good job of it. Have multiple children, but live in poverty or have housing issues. That's not an acceptable reason to, to steal someone, kidnap someone's child. Not kidnapping. Um, you had nine months. You had nine months to get your shit together. What the fuck did you do? You sat around in the tent, asked for donations for stupid shit. You could think about how much money she got for all the stupid photo shoots, for all of the fucking drugs that Xavier bought, for all the useless fucking makeup and crap that she bought. She could have saved. Maybe got even just first and last, and like stayed in there, got squatters rights because she would have had a kid. She could have played it a bit smarter than she did, even though she's not the best person. She still could have played it a bit smarter than she did. And she's like, she fucked up. Like you fucked up, and you gotta like live with it now. And it sucks. And like I don't wish that people's kids get taken away. It is a terrible thing that happened. But you had nine fucking months to get your shit together, and you couldn't. You wouldn't. You decided not to. You like made the decision that it wasn't worth it. The kid wasn't worth it to you. The apartment was worth it, but not the kid. Right? That's what I'm getting. If you people who claim to want to help with situations like this um, really feel that way, why don't you invest in programs that take a mom who's addicted, which I am not, and or a father who is addicted, which I am not a father, what about Xavier, though? And put both of them into some sort of rehabilitation together with the child so that all of their... Why would you subject a sober person and a fucking child to a rehab environment because the father's on drugs in this story you're painting? Like, what is this? What is that? What the fuck are you trying to say? Issues chemically can be addressed together. The rhetoric surrounding these issues, and I'm about to get up for the day. I woke up at six to pump, um, and then I needed to go back to sleep for an hour after breakfast. I feel really, really exhausted from the miles I did yesterday. Again, I'm only 16 days postpartum for anyone who doesn't understand that. Who's making you walk around again? You have everything you need right there, right? They're feeding you. You, just, you don't like the food. Why does she need to go to Nordstrom? Is that the same place that she bought the panties at or whatever? Um, but the the most of the people who are getting themselves in situations where there are court custody battles, where the biologic parents are fighting for custody of their own children, these are not people who are rushing in to adopt because they're saving the baby. These are people who are, like I said, selfish, self-entitled, self-centered, don't want to sacrifice their own breasts is that why is that why the people take the time out of their day to worry about the welfare of another human being that doesn't have any fucking relation to them at all because they're selfish and self-centered that's why that i'm really following your train of thought Heather. it makes total sense to me it makes total sense to me you're just like she's really pissed but you're directing your anger at them you should be pissed at yourself go look in the mirror and rant at yourself or, or Xavier. Xavier's just as much to blame. He should have been like up your ass too, being like, hey, we got to get our shit together. Me and are taking babies from healthy parents. You're not healthy. Who live in poverty. That That is not a reason to take a child from someone, period. I do not believe in adoption. I do not believe in surrogacy. And it's, it's interesting that you're going after a whole system when this is like a one instance. Unless she's, is she trying to be like, she just woke up one day and decided, I don't like this. This has nothing to do with my personal situation. I just don't like adoption or surrogacy. I don't know. I haven't been reading the comments. I'm sorry, guys. She's got me kind of locked in <laughs> right now. I haven't watched this either because this is all the stuff that um I was recording as I was, uh, as we were streaming the other stuff. And my hair is being crazy. I don't know what's wrong with it. And lastly, if you know a person is living in poverty and you're so financially to do well to do and stable that kind of kind of a sentence you can afford to take in 
someone else's child, then why not just make a donation towards the person's situation? Look at my situation entirely. I spent entire pregnancy in a tent, every week calling for assistance. Every law enforcement, every hospital, every agency that advertises themselves as being someone you would go to for these issues, they knew. I communicated with law enforcement every single week as to where we were staying, where our tent was, you know, requesting safety and, and that, you know, they helped us make sure no one stole stole from us or robbed us, et cetera, and so forth. So anyone who's been along for this ride uh, knows that like she calls the wrong places or she just goes in the cycle. Like she doesn't do what she's supposed to. So she doesn't get the resources that she's requesting. And then she also requests them from the wrong fucking places. So she's now using this to be like, well, everyone knew. Also, people told her where and how to get the resources she needed, but she ignored them. I don't even know why you're going to go on social media and complain about your situation for if you're not going to take advice from people. I, it is just for the money, right? It's just for the money, Heather. And people want to be as sympathetic to you. If you're indoors and weren't just like had a kid, didn't just have a kid, my words aren't coming out right. But like the optics now, they're a little bit different, right? If she had just went to a shelter, I don't think she'd be getting as much donations as if she just had a kid and went to a shelter. Now she can be indoors because people still feel bad enough for her because she had her kid taken. To, to only offer intervention after a child is born to someone in poverty, that's not assistance. That's a setup. That is kidnapping and it's illegal. All she had to do was show that she had some kind of plan and was sober. Like, it's a, it's a, what the fuck, bro? What the fuck? I don't know why it's on this thing for so long. It's just the end. This is the end of it. All right, here we go. Back for like round 24. <laughs> get ready get, i don't know maybe this one will be more chill maybe this will be more chill regards to my last post i would most certainly uh prefer that any of my children either of my two sons or either of my two daughters be able to say my mom was treated with kindness grace respect my mom went through some things and overcame them and society and our systems uh, helped her to not, you know, have to suffer anymore. My mom was a pioneer. My mom was uh, completely articulate in injustice. My mom advocated for those around her. And my mom had a beautiful life as a result of the selflessness that she endured her entire existence through the age of 30 something years old. I just... What? <laughs> what the fuck? This is how she sees herself? This is how she thinks her kids see her? Your kids see you as a homeless lady living in a tent. Because that's what you are. And that's reality. And I'll, that's as mean as I'll be. But Because like this is... This is getting to me. To me. <laughs> this is getting... Uh, um we're still in the, my mom is very strong. I, I would like to get over this hump to the, my mom deserves this rest. My mom deserves this peace. My mom deserves this beautiful life. It's just like the entitlement. Is, you know what I mean? Like she's like, I, it's all right. I'll get over it. Uh, grateful. Well, at least she says she's grateful. What is this? This actually looks not bad. Uh, tuna salad with hard boiled egg on a bun. Uh, three bean salad. Super high protein and delicious. I guess like if she hits the calories, she's not going to note the calories because then she can't say we got to get more food. But now it looks good though. And now it's just going to... I pray and I pray and I pray every single day for this gift to get out of the habit of just hanging out with your child. Just here to... There we go. So my son got his phone taken away in school today and has four detentions because he had his phone out in class. Being like, hey, guys, this is uh, Heather Gillespie's son. 
in the classroom. And uh, we're just doing some math, getting ready for the, the big game later. He is 15, going on 16, and I just don't know what to do with him. The teacher has a pouch on the back of the door for phones because apparently some students were having difficulty with notifications going off, not checking them. Um, but he doesn't like to do that. And so they locked his phone up for the weekend. So I had to call and they wanted him. He said they wanted a meeting. I wonder if that's a lie. I wonder if that's just like, I really don't want to deal with my crazy homeless mom this weekend. Like I just want to have a nice weekend. So she's going to blow up my phone. I'm going to fucking ignore it. And then on Monday, I'm just going to be like the school locked my phone up for the weekend. <laughs> I get off the phone with them and, and the dean tells me, well, basically your son brought in an extra phone because he... And then gets his friend to be the dean. Nah, if, it, if, it, if she's talking to the dean, then that's probably happened, I guess. But it'd be crazy if it was all just a lie to get out of uh, talking to her. He has anticipated getting caught on his phone and it was the extra phone that they confiscated, not his real phone. Ah... <sighs> Now, here's my thing. If it was his real phone, I feel like that would have been excessive, taking his real phone for the whole entire weekend as the school. But since it was his extra phone, it's like no big deal. But like... Why does he have an extra phone? The kids are just as addicted as she is. Oh, my goodness. Would they have still taken it for the whole weekend if it was his real phone? Who knows? You know, but um, I think that schools are justified in confiscating the phone just for the day. I don't know about the weekend, though. What do you guys think? Obesity is hard. That's one of the things. What the fuck is this? Okay, marriage is hard. Divorce is hard. Obesity is hard. Being fit is hard. Choose your hard. Choose your character. Being dead is hard. Being financially disciplined is hard. We're just going to make ways sad. Being rich is hard, guys. Um, communication is hard. Not communication is hard. I don't know why, why she posts this stuff. All right, so you guys have been hearing me for the last few days talking about Turning Point USA. So Turning Point USA, I like to watch because I feel as though they say things that most people... What are you doing? What is she doing? She's on... This is Instagram. She can't get naked on Instagram, right? Why is she... What the fuck is happening? People are thinking but won't say. There is one... Okay. She scared me. She's like, she's going to just take her tits and start fucking pumping. Mama mia. The beef that I have with them, and this is it. I keep hearing the rhetoric that racism doesn't exist systemically. Um, that's a lie. Right? I mean, you're gaslighting to say that. The other day, Xavier and I were at Walgreens, and we literally watched while this guy tried to run out of the store with like some Easter gift for like a little girl and some toilet paper. This person is pleading with security he, that he needs the, the toilet paper, that it's for his fam for his family. You don't understand how it feels to not be able to wipe your butt until you don't have any money to wipe your butt. Okay. Now, what happens when you don't have money for things like toilet paper? You go into a public stall and steal a bunch of toilet paper. That's that's probably a less risky way than stealing toilet paper for sale and going to jail. Well, yeah, I wouldn't go to jail. Would you go to jail for stealing toilet paper? I don't think so. Okay, so what happens when you don't have money for things like toilet paper, we can naturally conclude that you probably also don't have money for things like shoes, clothes, etc. and so forth. Now, if you don't have money for those things, and you're a family unit, who in the family is probably going to take it upon themselves to steal those things? Why do we got to steal? How did Jim Carrey do it? Jim Carrey was homeless. He lived out of a van in fucking Newmarket. 
And I don't think, I don't know. I, maybe Jim Carrey did live just like Heather. And no, because they didn't have like a social media back then. So I don't know how they did it, but maybe we'll just go find out. I don't really like Jim Carrey though. So, but we could probably find out. The father, right? Because when we value traditional gender roles, we're not going to ask a mother who's postpartum or a mother who's sitting home cooking for the, the, the children that she has to go commit a crime to obtain those things. So the father in a traditional gender role honoring the woman is going to put that burden on himself and he's going to go to the store and he's going to commit that crime. So he goes to prison. Now we have fatherless prison prison for what are you in prison for? I stole some toilet paper. To honor my wife as households poverty is a result of slavery most poverty okay. is it though okay and there are white people who were slaves too but for the overwhelming majority let's look at the civil rights era okay whoa, whoa, whoa heather you gotta slow down we're all over the place here um <laughs> no well i'm just gonna say that just no no you are blatantly denying the reality of a huge portion of Americans when you say things like this type of racism doesn't exist. When we fill our prison. Where did we get into racism? How did racism become any of this? And we also live in a crazy time where you can be, you can make money. You know all about all these ways to make money too, all about drop shipping and all this shit. Dog clothes, dog swag. You know what I mean? She doesn't follow through with any of her things, though, and then she just blames it all on, like, they. They are tech boxing her. It's not because she doesn't know how to use her phone. She doesn't read instructions, you know? That's why she's going to get the fucking Google Photos to work. She's, uh, she's never going to finish anything. She's always going to hit some kind of unbreakable block that she can't get past. And it's insane because these little, like, hiccups, anyone else would be able to navigate through except Heather. But then she just like gets angry about everything in life and then expects things handed to her. It's kind of really fucking annoying. Prison systems with people who are in prison. And now we're talking about racism for some reason. Oh, I remember back in so racism, prison, toilet paper. For committing crimes that they needed to commit to take care of their families. I'm not saying it's acceptable. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is whether you find it acceptable or you can understand it or not, denying that it took place and that it exists is not the answer. We've overcrowded our prison systems with people who have been committing crimes to support their families. There are people who go in there for other reasons, yes. But we need to. Turning Point USA, this is for you. Address it. You are the most... This is for you, Turning Point USA. Oh, my goodness. Maria, how are you doing tonight? Intelligent group I have ever met, I have ever seen, I have ever heard. You speak on things that are real and they make sense. Acknowledge that there is a such thing as systemic racism. Acknowledge that we put these people, these tremendous demographics of people in this position. And acknowledge that we can fix... Now we're going to get into gaslighting. Who's gaslighting us, Heather? I feel very gas. This is a crazy face, too. I could have used some of these faces. Well, I mean, like she didn't do these until uh, four hours. Actually, I probably could have had these for the thumbnail. We can fix it fairly simply. As I said before, there are studies where people, people who are, are wealthy people, were put into studies for 100 days 300 days whatever this remote period of time is yeah. and they were given no money then they were put through the same thing with a stipend of as little as three to four hundred dollars a month a month all of a sudden no one's going to prison all of a sudden no one's stealing toilet paper all of a sudden the police are not being you know called heavily to respond to these areas and can i see the statistics that line up with the, what you're saying <laughs> this currently when are we going to get into gaslighting? Why is this on the screen? Did you accidentally put this in the video, Heather? Are we going to get to gaslighting? As little as three to four hundred dollars can keep people from committing these crimes. You gaslit me into being poor and then I committed crimes. You gaslit me into becoming a criminal. Is that what the point of this is? What time is it? It's not even midnight. I'm already tired. But we continue to choose to do what with this money? Uh, I'm excited to see Jim Heather after all this. I think the gym will be fun. Where is this government funding going? Acknowledge it. Like, stop gaslighting saying that it doesn't. 
not here yeah doesn't exist that's not the answer to or the solution it ex wait, yes wait what exists i agree with you no one should be stealing or doing this and that so let's make a way for no, I don't think anyone said that the like fucking poverty doesn't exist or theft doesn't exist. General theft. What the hell is she talking about? And just for the record, I don't believe in reparations. Oh, no. I don't believe in it. You can hate me for it if you want. I don't believe that I. Are we? Is it daylight savings time tonight? Is it? Because then we're going to daylight savings time together, guys. It's my least favorite time of year. Ah! It's crazy. I don't like it. I hate fucking daylight savings time who I'm also living in poverty, doing my darndest to survive right now, you know, and going through hell myself. This is the best. This is the best you've ever lived, Heather, in the past year. 369 days. We're doing, we're going by my numbers now, Heather. But no, for real though, like, what are you bitching about now? What are you, why are you so worked up today? What is wrong? should be held liable or responsible for some shit that maybe my ancestors, maybe not my ancestors did. I don't know how long ago. I You're Irish. Your Irish ancestors were like fucking drunk playing golf probably or something, eating potatoes. Like, what are you talking? She, she's watching too much of the, the fucking alt-right content. I don't even know if Candace Owens is alt-right or just normal right or whatever. I'm going to have to figure out who the fuck Candace Owens is. I've never owned a slave and I respect all people regardless of race or color. So no, I don't think that I should be at a deficit to support you. What I do believe in is opportunity. Opportunity for all. An equal, even playing field. No, we are not born equal. No, we cannot all do the same jobs. But we all deserve the same chance to survive, to thrive, to function outside of prison, outside of mental health institutions, safety, peace, income, opportunity. Like, come on. It's humanity. It's being a, a decent human being. All right. I'm going to try to do some girly push-ups. We're doing girly push-ups now? Okay. Okay. Yep. Eating potatoes. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a full set. So this is what they mean when they say, listen to your body, ladies and moms who have just given birth. Okay. Oh, my upper body strength, you guys. And right now I can tell you, I already feel my pelvic floor very vulnerable. My abdomen, very vulnerable. When you're doing anything that's weight bearing, you want to be very careful postpartum. Uh, you're, you're at a tremendous risk for hernia if you overwork your abdominal. I'm going to say, I'm going to put this in the, uh, what is that thing with the two circles and then they over, I think it's a Venn diagram. I think it's a Venn diagram. Um, of like Heather, the Heather and James thing. Heather and James, as soon as they're indoors, get like extra fucking annoying. Um, which is sad because I want to be happy for her. Like, I want to be happy she's indoors and stuff. But Heather, you got to like chill the fuck out. Um, and the fitness stuff, like, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm not feeling the fitness stuff. I got to stop bitching. I'm turning into Heather. So, oh, this is rough. I'm going to do 10. Maybe. Ooh. I don't think that was 10. Imagine if she gave herself a heart. <laughs> what were you doing? I was trying to make an Instagram video. What is this, though? Um, yes, he's been told multiple times and doesn't listen. Yes, of course. Classes for learning and concentrating. During school, but sure. Over the weekend, absolutely not. Hell no. Over my dead body. Absolutely. The very cut up messages from, I, I'm assuming, the father of their kid. And here are some of your thoughts on the cell phone question. I... So should the school be permitted to take the cell phone of a child who has it out during class? And should they be permitted to keep it from the child for a prolonged period of time outside of that actual class? 
I got it. These are the answers to the cell phone question. Gotcha. I thought these were messages between the father and her. Um, so these are where people think. Um, should they be given the phone back at the end of the school day? Should they be permitted to hold it overnight? This is this is what you guys have been responding so far. So just for the record, I did speak directly with the dean. Sounds like a really nice person, very understanding um, and patient with the kids. And my son has his main phone. My thoughts are this. Um, I mostly agree with you guys. Yes, they should be permitted to take the phone during class classes for learning uh, if the child is using it, you know, excessively. But also some kids, they need their phone going home. Some kids, you know, need to call for a ride or call their parents or tell their parents where they are. So outside of class, absolutely not. I agree with that. Um, in addition, um, some kids have stress going on from home that's coming through their cell phone during the day. And I think that the bigger that's you, the fuck you, that's you, you are the stress coming from home. Well, the tent during the day while they're trying to focus at school. Cause you know, I call my kids a hundred times a day. I text them a hundred times. That's how I'm a good mom from the tent. Um, I don't know. You guys want to know what my answer would be? I don't think you should take fucking kids property. Uh, just make them turn the phone off. You know, back in the day, back in my day, uh, well, when I was in school, the cell phones weren't really a thing. I didn't even get a cell phone until I was like fucking 19. But, uh, see, there's different times. But back in the other days, <laughs> a little bit after my time, uh, you could just take the battery out of the cell phones. That would be really convenient. You could just take the battery out. But no, just turn it off. If they can't turn it off, send them to the fucking principal's office and send them home. You don't take people's property. That's just my opinion. The issue here is that we are building a society where we are taught, even as, as adults, to not ignore our phones. And that is the standard that we're setting for our children. There's lots of work environments where you can't be on your phone. You can't even have your phone like on you. You have to keep it in your locker. If it's like on a, if you're working in some factories. Um, when I worked in the call center before COVID happened and everything's just like work at home now, um, you couldn't have your cell phone on, on the floor. Uh, it would be an automatic, you get fired. <laughs> like uh, there's highly sensitive information. So even if like um, it's in your pocket, and it's powered on, but you're not using it. Like they're like, no, I can't risk it. So if, if it's on, like if it goes off in your pocket, you're fired. So I don't know what the fuck she's talking about, bro. Um, building them up in a society where you can't use your phones. This is the last post. Uh, this is uh, 2022. So let's go. Well, it kind of segues back into the gym. So let's go to the gym. Let's go to the X and grab what to Mahalit. What to do? Da, 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 da. All right, she's at the gym. What does she have to say in the gym? Uh, that's what's this? Thirty four. 33. Sure. This looks good. What's up, you guys? So 30 minutes ago, I decided I was going to come down for a workout. Um, and then I was like, well, let me go up and get my tripod. Well, first I noticed that no one had wrapped shit. The gym looks like fucked up. Um, I Can you show us? <laughs> she looks kind of like a ragamuffin here. I feel as though I deserve much better living conditions. I take care of everything. I clean after myself. I respect my belongings. I'm kind, I'm compassionate, um, among other things. I know how to make hella money. Uh, you know. They know how to make hella money, and that's why I'm living in a tent now. In the future, in the back to the future. I'm, I'm very intelligent, so there are a plethora of reasons. I'm prettier than you, I'm better than you, I'm different than you. Whatever the fuck you need to tell yourself. Uh, to make me right, wrong, bad, or good. At the end of the day, I deserve to be elsewhere. I deserve to be around people who conduct themselves in the same way I conduct myself. 
Are you going to be dancing? People who are not going to bring me down by their vibe being down. That's number one. Number two, FTR, I wanted to talk about some of the things that I went through to get to where I am mentally. Uh, I feel like people who are trapped in a cycle of pain, in a cycle of hopelessness, helplessness, I feel like it helps them to hear about some of the fucked up shit that success stories have to go through. And you can sit there and say, well, Heather, you don't have $12 million in your bank account yet, so you're not a success. Well, let me tell you what I am successful at. I've successfully completed three courses, ISSA, NCCPT, and NASA for personal training. I've successfully kept my shit together while being beaten by a man with a tire iron. Oh, how old is this? This is pretty old, right? Like, and she's still kind of saying the same fucking crap, but a little bit different. But I was, I'm surprised to hear the fucking tire iron thing come up. I've been jumped by three women. Um, I've successfully paid off a car all on my own. These are, these are the greatest hits, basically, for anyone who's new. I've successfully gotten numerous different departments. I've successfully given birth and raised three children uh, for 13 years, 14 years, I'm sorry, with minimal help uh, from anyone. Um, I have grown multiple successful marketing businesses and content creation businesses. I have successfully grown numerous Instagram accounts and other Twitter, uh, other platforms, TikTok accounts to several hundred or thousand of uh, viewers and followers. Um, so there's a lot of things that I'm successful at. I've successfully meal prepped. I've successfully taught others how to meal prep. I've successfully loved and been loved. I've successfully done a lot of shit. Um, so with that being said, I am, my ceiling is falling in my apartment. I have not been paid even once. Um, I oh, is this when she was pretending to work at the gym? Like she just started working there and that's why she never got fucking paid because she wasn't actually employed. Why was her ceiling falling through? I still haven't received a check. I still haven't received a court date. And I'm still pretty much in limbo. I should talk about restitution. Never mind. Uh, with the whole situation. So I, I continue to document. That's number one. Number two, or maybe that's number two. Anyways, uh, number three, uh, I 100% want to move forward on charges of domestic terrorism. I wouldn't mind how they're at my gym. Um, I just get on the treadmill or what, what are these things? Not, that is not a treadmill, the fake bicycle things. And I just listen to this and be like, okay, <laughs> tell me more. Uh, abuse, assault, negligence, um, for everyone who's been involved. 100%. There's not a doubt in my mind. I want to move forward. Um, number three and four. I want to talk about, um, so I'm being prevented right now from going live on Instagram as well as YouTube. Um, so I'm just going to take video. Oh, YouTube scared the fuck out of me today, guys. But I don't really need to get into that. But like on the second, well, it's the Steve Soroka channel. Uh, it, with the archive of Soroka videos. I used to like upload uh, videos, Heather videos private, just so I can convert them to MP4 so I can pop them over here. For the streams and today it was like your account's restricted you can't come back <laughs> you're banned um for being a robot or something like i thought i lost my account like the whole account um and then it wanted me to sign in and i got scared i was like what if i sign in and it kills all of my accounts because they're all connected uh but i did it anyways and i gave it back to me so i was like i don't know what the fuck that was about i wish i screenshot it but i was on the phone when it happened uh so i was like just trying to quickly like skim over it and fix it because i was talking about something else um but yeah no i screwed the fuck out of me i don't know what heather is being restricted from uh, is the point this is why that jogged my memory um i did maybe she just did not use her phone did she post something on instagram that was bad did she post some nudity did she get like banned for doing instagram lives and then I'll probably do this live again, um, probably somewhere publicly. Then more people can hear in person as well as online. Um, so I just wanted to discuss what was going on in my life prior to uh, 
everything that I discussed in length on the live video of my Instagram, where I discussed Marissa sucking the dicks of all of my exes. What? All of your exes? All of the, like, your baby daddies and shit? Marissa sucked their dick? What? I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Um, so I talked about a lot of shit. She's spicy, though. Fuck. During that video, but um, there's some more stuff that I wasn't able to touch on, and that's what I'm going to do now. Um, so... Oh. Oh. This is called Trials and Tribulations. We rest or something. If you search, uh, if you go to Heather's YouTube channel, there's like a little search button and you search Trials, Tribulations, Rest. That's how I found it. After meeting Dylan and um, beginning to date him or, you know, he proposed to me and, and I was engaged in a relationship with him it wasn't really dating. Our relationship was different than any outside relationship. I'd say it was much more intimate because we really got to know each other. We spent a lot of time talking, planning business, growing business, doing business. Uh, we were in the club. Heather, that's kind of incriminating. Why is this still up on your YouTube channel? You growing business, doing business. You said after all this is dead and done and over that he ran an illegal business and that he was like, fucking trafficking people so that doesn't make you sound very good right there what now does it oh my goodness oh my goodness Club getting fucked up together you know and this is how we fell in love we were at a table having four to six hour conversations and this is how we fell in love um so that's number one number two I knew that I loved him because I saw the fuck up and I saw what the fuck up could be when he stopped fucking up. And that was something I had really related to in a lot of ways because I myself have fucked up, you know, everyone has, but I knew how it felt to be labeled, to be judged, and I respected him for being able to rise out of that fuck up, so to speak. Um, now, right before Dylan came home, first of all, maintaining the relationship, maintaining any relationship with someone in prison is exhausting. Uh, it's absolutely exhausting. The prison system is staffed with high school graduates um, who are yes to their superiors but they're yes men who have a lot of freedom to mistreat and abuse the people beneath them who in their eyes are it's crazy that she's talking with her hands well this is she's not <laughs> she's not like getting out of breath or anything she's just and also just running the fucking i want to call this a treadmill it's a cycle cycling machine the cycle is it called just the cycle it doesn't sound right to me the inmates so they're supposed to abide by policy but the spinner machine they're working with these inmates for eight to ten hour periods sometimes longer uh, okay with little supervision um that means that a spin cycle I've never heard that. I like that though. That's that's a what is wrong with my brain? I was gonna say that's a dishwasher term. That's a laundry machine term. Exercise bike. Yeah, I've heard that before. Oh yeah, we'll call it that. They and mud pits Australian. I would have figured they're called something crazy in Australia. In mistreat and abuse these inmates and not get caught very easily. They can manipulate. They can coerce and vice versa. If you're dealing with, with an inmate who has an above level, above average level of intelligence, <clears throat> Dylan, um, and they're, they're dealing with, you know, an officer, uh, a CO who barely graduated high school, 
it's very easily that you know very easy to understand that they could they could easily be manipulated and used and coerce themselves which is another reason why he got away with so much shit. i know like uh yeah Thank you, thank you. Like spin class, because I know there's spin class. That's why I called it a spinner. <laughs> so it feels spinners. Um, so spin cycles, like I'm just surprised that they're like we're gonna call these spin cycles now. Because I, yeah, that, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. It's just an it's an exercise bike. That's what they call. That's what they were called back in my day. Um, before it was called spin class, or um, I don't know, man. I gotta look up when spin class is invented now. <laughs> Um, I remember one time sitting at a table knowing that Dylan had hooked up with one of the COs, knowing for a fact this bitch locked me and my child in this small caged area well. with six or seven witnesses and refused to let us leave. Marissa did this? Uh, there were tons of events like that that took place over the four years Dylan was incarcerated, both in Vienna and at Stateville. What were you doing? Wait. Is that, was that Marissa she was talking about? Why were you chilling with Marissa while Dylan was in jail? That's, that's really weird. I. 1991, spinning is actually a registered trademark by unique fitness products and programs. Mad Dog athletics yeah so it's like all jacuzzis are hot tubs but not all hot tubs are jacuzzis um all spin cycles are exercise bikes but not all exercise bikes are spin cycles you know i have done my best to be forgiving to be understanding to move forward but i'm gonna just say one more time my car is gone. My home is gone. My bank account is on zero. And I'm still waiting on that check. I haven't been scheduled a court date. No one has heard any of my claims that I can prove. All provable. Good night, Serena. Um, now, after we made it through that long process that was very stressful, exhausting, painful, to stay committed to someone while he's having his issues on the inside and I'm being sexually abused and having my issues, stress, and life on the outside, we're both very exhausted. Oh, the prison guard did that to Heather, not Marissa. That would have been crazy if it was Marissa. Is the prison guard's name also Marissa, or am I just, or am I just crazy? Emotionally, and we somehow made it through. So, during the last year of Dylan's incarceration, he was moved from Vienna, Illinois, eight hours south to Stateville in Joliet. He was a part of some work program, supposedly. Um, and that program was a year long. Stateville is also the place where inmates go from county to be classified and await their assignment of which prison they'll spend the duration of their sentence in. Uh, you want to see the milk again? <laughs> I can't believe I bought I bought all that milk just to show you guys that I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do with it. I don't even have any cereal. To, I don't know. I'm just gonna drink milk. What can I make into milk? What can I make out of milk? What recipes can I do? So they call it NRC. Um, things are very bad in, in NRC, but we'll get to that at another day. Um, once Dylan got moved to Stateville, I was happy. Uh, it meant I wouldn't have to pay someone upwards of a thousand dollars for hotel, food, gas to drive me. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I usually just use like heavy whipping cream for anything that you normally use milk for, but I could just use milk for that stuff for now. I guess it'd be kind of healthier. Not that like, I don't think I'm going to, if I ever get fat guys, 
That'd be something. That'd be. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I kind of be a little proud. I don't think I can get fat. I, I can eat whatever I want. Um, milk steak. I can make a steak out of milk. Never thought about that. I'm just. I think I'm just gonna drink. I don't know how long milk stays fresh for. I can't imagine it's that long. So I'll just drink it. <laughs> See what happens to me. Eight hours to visit him. The visits in Vienna were contact. So you're able to touch and hug and kiss. Well, okay. So I have the one bag frozen already. I'm going to freeze another bag. And one of the bags that I'm freezing, I'm just going to like throw off a bridge or something and watch it explode. I'm going to film it for members only. And then um, then I, the other one that I'm freezing, I'm going to unfreeze and then do a taste test because you guys were like, you can freeze milk and unfreeze it and it'll be the same thing. And I don't believe you guys. So I'm going to try it. Um, and then I just bought chocolate milk. I don't, I actually don't like chocolate, but I don't mind chocolate milk. I could probably put that in my coffee or something. I don't, I, like, I think I can get through it. That's because it's a lot of milk, though. That's a lot of milk. Um, and they're long, like anywhere from four to eight hours long. You could stay all day. There's no limit. And I, I mostly always would. Um, so you've got to understand that, you know, him moving closer, it meant now I only had to drive an hour and a half outside of the city where I lived to see him as opposed to eight hours, um, which I did every single Saturday and Sunday. Um, inmates are only given visits two days a week and also on holidays, and they're an hour each. So I was driving three hours to see him for one. Um, Why? It seems like a waste of everyone's time. I got to buy more cereal. It's a hit or miss. Whenever I order it, it's like half the time it comes. I want to say less than half the time. And I usually, I just put like cereal and yogurt. And I eat uh, the cereal and yogurt because I'm weird. I can feed him. I can hug him. I can hold his hand. And that was about it but we were both grateful. We got to take our first set of photos together when he moved to Stateville because they didn't allow photography in Vienna. What is Heather, like, what drew Heather to Dylan? Other than drugs. Like, I'm just assuming it's the drugs because, like, she already had stable health, well, I don't know about healthy relationships, but normal relationships, right, with the other guys. Wouldn't she want to date someone who's not in fucking prison? Who's just a normal person? Or even just like a drug dealer that isn't in prison if she really is this is all for drugs? And I remember him so excited. Babe, do your hair. I'm going to buy a set of photos. And I was equally excited. Like I had no pictures of him. I only knew him from the party scene before he went in. We weren't posing for photos together. He was a bad guy before he went in. I mean, he was doing fucked up shit. What attracted you to him? A lot of fucked up shit. So we took our first set of photos. He, he bought photos for every weekend. We took photos every weekend together. And I knew that I was the only person that was visiting him. Because you have to get your visiting list approved. So it was me at every single visit, every single weekend. I think I think you could probably get around the the list. Oh no, there's a list. I don't have anyone over. You have to look at the list. And I did that for the entire year he was there at Stateville. Am I recording? Yes. Okay. Um, besides the cost of, you know, the food he wanted to eat, it's also the gas, the time. Let me say that one more time. Three hours round trip to sit with him for one hour. Every Saturday and Sunday and also every holiday. 
but I did it, you know, as stressful as it was. Yeah, where are her kids right now? Like in this exact moment in time where her kids and like during all this time, like going to and from the prison, she was bringing the kids to the prison. Is that what she was just describing with the um, corrections, not the corrections officer or um, security guard? Now, two that I th thought was Marissa for some reason. Two weeks before he was going to get released, I was leaving a visit and some bitch called me a dumb white bitch. Her and her inmate were staring at Dylan and I hard. And I kept on asking Dylan, like, what the fuck is that bitch looking at? And Dylan's like, nothing, babe. She's not looking at you. No, no. Everything's fine. But I'm looking back and I can see both her and the dude are staring at me, talking about me blatantly, making hand gestures towards me. And Throwing up gang signs, being like, Yo, look at this. Look at this head that we were going to get her at the gas station. We're going to mess her up at the gas station. So she's probably receiving my energy like, bitch, what the fuck are you looking at? Although I didn't say anything to her, I could feel that, you know, and Dylan's denying it. So I leave. And in the parking lot, she tries to juke me. And tries to what? I heard shoot. And she was like, she wanted to fight me right then and there. And I didn't know this bitch from Adam. I'd never even seen her in the visiting room prior to that, to those two weeks that I saw her. But I was there every weekend. So I told her, I'm not gonna fight you here at the prison, bitch. Number one, I don't fight. I'm a lady. Duke? I'm not, I've never heard that term in my life. Did you, did you, what is that? Like, that's the juke? Like, jump? Like, jump him? Number two, if I was going to fight you, it wouldn't be on federal property. And number three, I don't, ha I don't even know you. What the I can't. I'm actually not even looking at her. <laughs> I can't look at those legs keep going like that. It's going to make me, like, start tapping my leg or start fidgeting. It's a weird... It's a weird workout video she's like just explaining her whole life kind of and complaining about it but on a treadmill which is something what the fuck is your deal what's your issue what's your what's your concern why are you starting to shit with me and she said something along the lines of some derogatory racist comment about me being white again she was hispanic and that shit heated me up I'm tired. Who cares? Tired of being, you know, bullied around, especially by people in the prison system, because I'm not hood enough, or I'm not street enough, or because I'm too white. So I'm heated, and I tell her, "Look, bitch, there's a gas station up the road. Meet me there. I'm gonna fuck you up. I've never been in a fight before in my life. Never." She says, cool, run it. We go to the gas station. I jump out of my car, slam the door. This bitch jumps out with three. Why did you get out of your car? Why didn't you just not go to the gas station? Bitches. Three. I'm alone. There's no one in my car. I have no weapon. It's just me. Her and two other women all having weapons. Jump me and stab me. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over. On camera. In Bolingbrook. They were defending themselves. because And you wanted all the smoke. And then even after they retreated. And the situation was diffused. You were like, ah, no. I'm going to, I don't know what she wanted to do. I guess. If Heather had her way. She would have beat the fuck out of all of them. And then that would have been on camera. And then she would have got arrested, and then she would have made up some other fucking story. God knows what that would have been. She she would have been like, I was defending myself from what? What would you have been said? I don't even know, man. Imagine that happened, though. Not 10 minutes after I left the prison. Then they jump in their car like some cowards and dip. I'm laying on the ground, bleeding out. 
And another woman came. And she said, oh my God, are you okay? A bunch of people had already called 911. And I told her, I think I'm probably gonna die. I'm bleeding out, there's blood everywhere. There's blood all over my car. A knife the size of a pinky. Well, uh, I mean, like, that's still, like, I guess I could do some damage, but they were like, I don't even think it would defend me. I have to defend myself from her. There's blood all over the ground. There's blood all over my feet. I'm losing consciousness, feeling dizzy and faint. The paramedics get there. They cut my clothes off. I'm naked in the back of the ambulance. They're counting puncture wounds on my body. They take me to Bolingbrook Hospital. I was scared. I was alone. My phone was gone. I had a trap phone in the glove box of my car, just in case. What do I mean by trap phone? Prepaid phone. That's just what they call it in the streets when it's a prepaid phone, trap phone. Oh, trap phone. I thought she said chap phone or chat phone. I didn't know what she was saying. Okay, yeah, trap phone. Okay. Prepaid. I had one of those in the glove box of my car. I had no contract phone with me. My money was gone out of my wallet. I had five to a thousand dollars, one hundred percent on. That's a good point, TD. She showed her prego belly, sand scars, no scars. Uh, you think they would have you could incorporated it into cocoa pumpkin belly? I didn't even think of that. I didn't even think of that. About cash in my wallet. The only people who had, had access to that were the police in Bolingbrook. They were the ones who went through my car. So the doctors checked me out. They put stitches, blue stitches in all the wounds. The bitches were using screwdrivers, not knives. So you only use sutures for deep cuts. These were all screwdriver cuts, so they could. Yeah, she wouldn't be. <laughs> There'd always be some kind of drama. Like, it wouldn't ever just be like about the dancing. It'd be about God knows what, everything in between. But they weren't long enough to use sutures. So they glue them all up, clean them all out, do uh, some sort of radiology. I want to say it was a CT. It wasn't an MRI to make sure that my lung wasn't punctured because I was having difficulty breathing. It turned out to just be broken and bruised ribs. There are no broken and bruised ribs. We saw like we read the police report. All of it. She did. She did get stabbed, technically, and there was a little bit of blood. A little bit of blood. We'll give her that. There was a punctured lung or broken ribs. The ribs were not broken. Like that, this is an insanely different story than what we read. Even different than how she tells it. Did she say that there was a screwdrivers in this in this iteration of the story? Because like it's screwdrivers nowadays. Um, <laughs> Jesus, jumping Jehovah's Witnesses. Now that my father, thank you for the five. Candace Owens is a female black conservative that works with the turning point right wing politics. Heather is just being a sociopath. I mean, I figured, but um, yeah, I don't know. I just I, I need to know what is influencing my Heather because this isn't the Heather I know. The Heather I know wastes her life away in a tent. She doesn't get all political. I mean, like, what's even the point, Heather? Nothing's not gonna fucking change any minds or anything. You, I don't know. <laughs> what do I want from Heather? I just whatever Heather's gonna do is just whatever she's gonna do, you know. Thank God my lung wasn't punctured, but it was centimeters. The stab wound right here was centimeters from puncturing my lung. Centimeters. So they closed me up. I'm all alone still. And at the I've had a collapse lung. She, so like, it's just like, it's offensive to me. It comes in. Get ready for this. Now I'm crying. I'm scared. This guy tries to strong arm me and bully me and says, we're not going to do shit about this because you were the aggressor. Yeah. I sat there like, 
bitch. I didn't say that, but in my mind, I'm like, you're a straight bitch. You're a bitch. You lost the fight, and now you want to press charges because you lost the fight. I bet you bottom dollars to donuts or whatever the fuck Repsion would say. Um, if you won the fight, you wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, they should press charges against me or press or whatever. You lost the fight. J bitches or snitches get stitches. Did you even need stitches for that little, uh, the little uh, pinky, pinky knife stab wound? You're a dude with a badge coming in and seeing a woman just got stabbed, crying, shaking, scared to death. Scared to death. And instead of you helping me, you say you're not going to do anything because I'm the aggressor. I just got jumped by three women, stabbed 11 times with screwdrivers. I'm alone. I'm the aggressor. Why did you pick the fight? Ha! You have security footage. She reminds me a lot of Dylan. She's got a lot of Dylan's like that. Ha! I can picture Dylan doing that. That's a Dylanism. But you're not going to do anything. Okay. That's cool. One of the cops drives me back to my car. My car is taped off. Tape all around it. Crime scene tape. There's blood all over the floor at the gas station. My car seat covered in blood. Covered. The floor. Floorboard covered in blood. There's blood splatter all over the hood, quarter panel, and door of my car. The cops use these stickers to take measurements of how much blood is on the car for their report. The stickers, the crime scene tape, and the blood are all still there. As this officer drops me back off to my car at two or three in the morning, with no money, not even what did you have money before? We were you expecting to get money from this? Cause that that's kind of fucking crazy. And money just doesn't happen overnight. Like you it's like, oh, you got stabbed because you you started a fight, you couldn't win, you bit off way way more than you could handle. I don't know why the fuck you're picking fights with three other women. Maybe she thought like, oh. They'll think I'm so crazy that they'll just back off. And they were like, no, fuck this shit. Because <laughs> fuck this shit. Um, Heather, Heather, Heather. Because all the cash I had was stolen out of my car. The police have no idea where it went. None whatsoever. I was called gang baby trash. Never been a gang member in my whole life. I was called prison trash. I don't know what it is with you, Heather. You wanted to be more hood. Now you're offended that people are calling you gangbang or trash. Like, what is it? You want to be hood or you don't want to be hood? You want to be this little, like, fucking princess? What is it? Never been to prison in my whole life other than to visit. And I was told I wouldn't be... I just date people in prison, okay? I don't go to prison. I'm not trash. I just date trash. Assisted by the cops. Now my money is missing. My phone is missing. But the cops are the good guys, though, right? Okay. Whatever. Police report was like, we gave her a phone. And then she was like, talking about some other phone. <laughs> it was in her car. Like, they didn't take her phone. So I'm at my car in paper pants and a paper shirt. In the middle of the fucking night. I can barely move. Do you want, I, I don't know if you, to get stabbed by a knife hurts. But if you survive, they suture you and you're good. To get stabbed by a dull instrument, like an ice pick or a screwdriver, causes not only a deep laceration, but also a contusion. So the force of that object, a big bruise. I, my whole, I could barely move. Cool, I tough it out. I peel the stickers off my car and wipe the blood off. I get back in my car and I call TCP. And I tell him I'm fucked up, I'm scared. I don't wanna go home. I don't know what to do. He's like, what happened? I'm like, I just got stabbed, jumped and stabbed. I'm scared. He said, meet me here. He gave me a location, I met him there. He gave me some gas money, all my money was gone. I don't wanna go home. I was 
TCP usually stands for to catch a predator. Uh, did she say TCP? Oh, my legs are stiff. What time is it? What time is it, Mr. Wolf? Oh, fuck. Huh? I don't know. We've been going for two and a half hours. How long is this thing? PCP's cousin. Oh, is it? CCP, PCP. I've never heard of TCP as a drug. What does TCP do? I was terrified. I was terrified to be alone. I was numb. I was scared. I was in pain. Woo. My kids were with their dad. Like they always were on the weekends. They were with me Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then I dropped them off at school Friday or they get picked up Friday morning for school. And I go get them again Monday or Sunday, Sunday night usually. That was our visitation schedule. So I spent the next day or two with TC, just sitting passenger in his car while he worked and ran errands, terrified to go home. She was driving around. She didn't realize she was still live streaming. When was that? What did she do? Finally, the day comes. She talking to herself. One day that the kids are coming home, and I go home, and uh, I try to get a little rest. And I wake up from a nap, and I go outside to go pick up my daughter from school, preschool. And there's a fucking boot on my car. I have no money. All the money I had just got robbed from me by the Bolingbrook police. Ah. I start calling people, begging for help. I go in my house where I commonly hit cash. I always hit cash. Maybe. I start tearing shit up. I, remember. I found $200 bills, maybe three. I needed $900 to get the fucking boot off my car. No. I wish that, like, I just had $100 bills lying around my fucking house. She was, I found two $100 bills. Like, just, what, in between the couch cushions? Like, Jesus. $900. I called my kid's great-grandma. She borrowed me the money. And I walked from Pulaski and Irving to Ashland and Irving. Two days after being stabbed, wounded as fuck, but I paid that shit. I got back to my house and I thought, God, I, I don't know if I can keep going. I don't know what to do. I'm scared. I'm sad. I couldn't talk to Dylan because when you're in prison, you have to have your phone numbers approved. You have to give the phone number to the prison staff and they have to approve the phone number. You can't just call any number. So when they took my contract phone, I had no way to reach him. Good night, BCG. The phone number from the track phone, he didn't have it on the list. So I'm calling his mom, terrified, his dad. Finally, I was able to get a hold of his dad. Right around the time they took the boot off the car. And his dad said, his mom said he had, she'd have Dylan call his dad. So I went over there and waited for Dylan to call on his dad's phone. I also went to visit him the next day, right after the stabbing. So, fucked up, not healed up at all, drew on a change of clothes, and went to visit him the next day. Talked to him the day after that on his dad's phone, got the boot off the car. I don't think I can handle any more, I'm telling him. He's telling me, stay strong, babe, it's okay. I was never thinking that he had anything to do with those girls stabbing me. Never. But right, right, reader pain. I'm going to go hit a bowl real quick. I, I'll let her keep cycling. The, the cycling noise is like, I think I could fall asleep. I could fall asleep to this rant, to be honest. Um. I wish I knew Heather. I wish I like knew of Heather back in these days. Oh, could he have? Maybe. They won't let me talk to him and find out. I don't know to this day why those girls stabbed me. 
to this day, I don't know why those girls scared me. So there's been no follow-up from the state, no follow-up from the law, no follow-up from anyone. That was the beginning of when all of these instances started taking place. And it's been nonstop ever since then. And that was April 2019. So Dylan comes home and uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Um, that night after talking to him on the phone while he was with his dad, I go home, I have the kids. It starts storming like a motherfucker. I hear something outside, thought, 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 and my car's parked underneath the train. I was at 1827 West Kyler. I go and move my car. It was water dumping down from the railroad tracks, and there was about two feet of water under my car. I go move my car to the other side of the street. I try getting back into my house. All three kids are sleeping. The pressure from the water pouring into my house from every faucet, from the toilet, from the sinks, from the doors. My whole house was flooded. I couldn't even get the door open. I pushed that motherfucker with all my might. My kids were crying. I picked up the baby Alexis. She was six, five at the time. I threw her over my shoulder. I grabbed the hands of the big kids. My daughter grabbed small Dylan, the cat, and we left. I put him in the car, it was two or three in the morning. I had no idea, no idea where we were gonna go. I tried calling the family, but they were sleeping. It was the middle of the night. Cam called me right at that exact moment. Cam had stayed with me for three or four days when he first was released and slept on my couch. Again, all these guys, TC, Cam, I never had any sexual relationship with, not even the thought of it. They were like brothers to me. So Cam calls, are you okay? No, I'm not okay. I explained about the flood. He tells me he has a room at the Silversmith Hotel that I can come take the room. It's a suite, a huge suite. Did she say small Dylan? Because I heard, I heard small Dylan. But that's, does she have a cat named small Dylan? Does she have a cat? Because I thought that was TD's cat, small Dylan. Am I tripping? I know you guys like to, she play tricks on me sometimes. Um, does she have a cat named Small Dylan? And if she did, what happened to the cat named Small Dylan? I'm so grateful. I drive downtown. I leave the cat in the car. And I take the kids up. Cam's in the room by himself. And I tell him, I know he's been, you know, he parties from time to time. So I make sure I ask him on the phone before I get there and as soon as I arrive. This is not a party, right? I need my kids to have a few more hours of sleep. I'm leaving first thing in the morning. You're not having anyone here. You promised me, no, I'm not even staying here. It's for you and the kids. Thank you. So I put the kids in the king size bed in the, in the end room. I put on a movie for them. They go back to sleep. Some guy comes in, African dude. I don't know, I've never seen him before, but him and Cam go in the bathroom and start taking the bump. I fucking was pissed. I come storming out of the bedroom like, bro, I asked you two times. Now I got my kids in bed. You told me no one's going to be here. They respectfully grabbed their shit and got the fuck out in that exact moment. Didn't even argue with me. They left. I had a dog named Casey. Uh, but it's like the letters KC and his full name was Kenneth Charles. So when he was bad, I'd be like Kenneth Charles and he knew. He knew. But if it's Casey, then he's, everything's good. I miss that dog. The kids went to sleep. I sat up. I sat up the whole night. I waited for morning to come. And then the kids and I left. I went and dropped the big kids off at their dad, the baby off at her dad. And went back to the apartment to try to see what I could salvage. Now, in a matter of two weeks, my entire life has been ruined. I've been physically assaulted and stabbed. 
numerous times. She talked about herself. That's all she <laughs> talks about. Or like the people who have done the terror. They, you know, they. My car has been booted and all my money has been stolen. I've been ignored by the criminal justice system. I have nowhere to live. In a matter of two weeks. And it's two weeks before Dylan gets out of prison. And we're supposed to shoot a reality show in her house. And I don't even have a parole address for him because my house is flooded. I'm going to leave it right there for now, but we can pick that back up later. It's a lot for me to remember. It's a lot for me to discuss. All of this is prior to them beating the fuck out of me with a tire iron. Prior to me getting raped four times because they put me outside in my new apartment. I'm done. Where the fuck is my check? Your check? I don't think you're getting a check, but she, the cycling's getting faster. Barb, I can't see your comment i don't know where it is here how far up is it did i miss it i don't i do not see it i don't see it um you might have to type it again i'm sorry guys i'm bad at, I'm bad at reading chat <laughs> you down playing some guitar to heather i did one time well did I, I didn't put guitar. I played ukulele to Heather one time, like in a in a thing. And it was pretty fancy, but um, one day, one day. Oh, like her, her angry. Like I've seen actually some videos like that. Well, they'll, well, they'll take like those viral angry videos and they'll make them into like metal songs. We, I could do that actually. That's not a bad idea. Should do that. Matter and bam, matter and bam, vandal and bam. Oh, should probably have that up. <laughs> I don't know where that is right now. Um, but that's it for tonight. Um, I hope you guys have a great night. Heather's crazy at the gym. She's fucking angry. She's just been angry this week, though. Heather's kind of exhausted me this week. I hope she, um, I don't know. Just has a be better attitude about things. I like the... I'm not going to give up, Heather, but this is just... Being an in indoor cat has spoiled her. I just came on, and I thought she was in your house. I'm have... <laughs> that would be... That'd be scary if she was, like, right here with me. Can you imagine? That'd be... Oh, we'd have more people in here for sure. Maybe one. I hope not. I hope that never happens. Um, but yeah, have a great night, guys. Thank you, everyone uh, who gave super chats. Uh, Alexis, thank you. Um, not without my father. Oh, thank you for two of them. You don't have to do that. Um, I hope you guys have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow if you're a member. I don't know if I'm going to do a public stream tomorrow. But I'll do something for the members. And Sunday, we'll be back. Oh, Soroka. Soroka Sunday. Yeah. Maybe I will do, a, actually, a public stream tomorrow. Maybe. Uh, yeah. See you guys. Good night.